Welcome to Central Catholic Basketball. My name is Kyle Templin. Next to me is Ryan Meredith. And we got Emma, Joe, JP, and Tom doing some stuff in the background for us. We're here at Alumni Hall with the JV team. We'll get to the varsity stuff later, but the JV team right now is getting ready to take the court. And I can't tell you, I mean, I haven't seen this many people show up for a JV game in a long time. I'm sure that a lot of people are going to be here for the varsity game. They're going to stay late. It really feels like this is like Duke versus North Carolina basketball. Yes, absolutely electrifying atmosphere here at Alumni Hall where the Vice getting ready to take on Fox Chapel. Sort of a revenge game after they lost to them at Fox yes. Chapel earlier in the season. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, they lost to Fox Chapel earlier this season, 54-37. to 37. It's one of the Central Catholic Vikings' four losses, but the only one that they have uh, to a 6A opponent. Right now, uh, the Vikings are number three in the 6A rankings, and the Fox Chapel Foxes, number one. So it looks like we are going to get ready here to tip off. Fox Chapel, obviously, in the red. Central Catholic will don the white jerseys for the varsity team, or junior varsity, sorry. Central wins the tip, and Thomas now has the ball at the top. Thomas working inside, can't get that one to go. So aggression early for the JV team. I see that, driving straight to the basket. It, it seems like, uh, you know, overall, that's how they're going to have to play Fox Chapel. Yes, definitely going to have to get inside, get the basket inside, as that's just a bit Ooh, bad pass. Yeah, bad pass there. Or, a rare bad pass from Central Catholic, actually. Ball goes out of bounds. Central Catholic will go back on the offense. And the JV squad, you know, for the most part this season have been a high-scoring team. Yes, the JV, and of course, JV also wins their games by a lot of points. It's only been, it's been very rare for them to be having close games. They've been blowing teams out left and right. Wow, number 21 there, uh, Alex Pitcher drained a long three-pointer there. And I don't know why the scoreboard hasn't updated yet, but. It looks like so far Central Catholic three, Fox Chapel two. Ooh, some uh, aggressive down, uh, down underneath the basket there. And it looks like, uh, looks like uh, out of bounds, looks like Central Catholic will retain. I don't know what's going on with the scoreboard. Somebody. He, somebody pitcher airballed it, so where it looked like it hit uh, the net. Okay, I got you. But Mason now with the ball trying to get something. Oh, nice set up there for the three and drained. And Xavier Thomas for three with a mat, with a big one. And with it. the steal there. Central Catholic with the offensive rebound and puts it back in, takes the lead five to three. And we've seen that classic Central Catholic press in the backcourt there. Fox Chapel able to work around it. And the defense is something that Coach Urso and the whole program thrive themselves on. Yeah, the defense is strong with the JV team for sure. And the crowd excited getting in the game here. It's just a long possession for Fox Chapel Central, yep. just denying access inside the paint. Yeah, they're making him shoot from the perimeter for sure. And a steal on the inside there. Great work by Central Catholic. Yeah, no, Mason, great job to tip the ball over to Pitcher. Couldn't get the finger roll in there for Pitcher, and Cole Sullivan getting the offensive rebound, and he'll get two shots. Nice. Cole Sullivan made that basket earlier. He already has two points. So going to the line, which Central Catholic is, is actually very good at. Um, you know, they, uh, they like to convert from the free for a line, which, you know, is always good whenever you're a coach to see that. And I think I jinxed it on that one because he just missed it. Yeah, so. that, that ball hit every single part <laughs> of the rim almost. I'll take, I'll take responsibility for that. <laughs> and the second one also no good. So Central Catholic with the lead, 5-3. 
Fox Chapel charging down court and looks like we're going to have a foul called. And number 21, although I didn't see the reach, but I couldn't really see either. So Yeah, Alex Pitcher just reached in there a little and foul's going to be called. So Fox Chapel will inbound. And the Foxes, like, you, like we were saying, very patient with the ball. Yeah, definitely not forcing any type of shots for Fox Chapel. No, no, and they don't seem to be in a hurry either. Picking their spots, Fox Chapel, number 35 there, went ahead and uh, converted there for the two. That's Miles Mason, sophomore. Nick Petrunia with the ball. Kicks over to Krasinski, over to Mason in the corner. S Sullivan, three, can't get it to go, but he gets his own rebound. Very nice. And gets the foul. He missed both from the line last time. Definitely not looking to do that again. I'm not going to say anything about that. So the uh, the aggression for Fox Chapel, though, try, you know, I mean, guys charging straight to the basket. Normally we see the JV team uh, very aggressive on their shots. So uh, where the varsity team tends to pick their, their plays a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, the JV team, very aggressive. Charging to the basket. If they have an open three, they take it. Um, everybody on this team seems like they can shoot, which is a good thing if you're the coach. And drains both of them. That puts Central Catholic up by two. Yeah, and that gets Sullivan four points on the day as well. Fox Chapel trying to find something, but again, just getting denied every opportunity they get. Yeah, uh, Central Catholic Vikings are doing a tremendous job of covering um, each and every person that gets down low below the basket there, forcing them to move outside. 35 trying to post up down there, but just can't seem to uh, get an angle on uh, pitcher. Three ball, that one's good. That one is good. And that was number 15, Thomas Patterson. Drained a three there, putting Fox Chapel up by one, eight to seven. David Fleming, watch out. He can shoot the lights out when he gets the chance. The foul's gonna be called on the floor there. Yeah, it looked like he was fouled before he made his move to the basket there. Fox Chapel will take the foul and Central Catholic will inbound the ball on offense. Fox Chapel with three early fouls. Petrunia calling the play. Long three-point attempt there. That might seem as they in transition, they're just going to lose handles on the ball. Yeah, it looked like on that one, Fox Chapel, it looks like they are a good ball handling team, but uh, they kind of got ahead of themselves on that one and uh, got too excited, went down the court and lost the ball. So Central Catholic will go back on offense. Pitcher going to take the three. Sullivan and can't get that go one to go. The backboard there. Cole Sullivan, he might, he's a big man who can bang down low, get the baskets inside, but he, he might have missed that three-pointer, but he is lethal from three. Yeah, he normally is. And uh, on that one, it, he just he was able to, to get rim and, and just uh, not enough net. So um, great shot, though. Now, Fox Chapel, again, long possession. They want to set up their offense. Swings it over. Yeah, very patient. And that one's just going to be taken away by David Fleming. Yeah, Fleming just saw that one, telegraphed it, reached right inside and grabbed it. Thomas over to Petrunia. Nick Petrunia, also a varsity player who plays down for JV. Yeah, uh, excellent player, handshake guy, very important to the team. 
Uh, but, uh, yeah, he, uh, he, he is a, a very skilled player. As Kwasinski sort of just threw the ball away to try to save the over and back, but now Fox Chapel has possession of the ball. He's driving in. Shots up. It's no good. It's going to go deep pass to Fleming as he nails David Fleming in transition. Excellent pass. That was like a touchdown pass there with the wide receiver cutting in. It was perfectly timed. Now Fox Chapel looking to get something to counter. Swings it over. Kicks over to the top of the key. Again being denied, Thomas playing excellent defense. 30 seconds left in the game. Deep three wow. as he drills it. It was an awkward shot, but it, he got all net on it. This Thomas going to bring it up the floor. It was Asher White. As you think, Central would look to hold for last shot here. It's a oh. Just a pass just a bit too long, and now Fox Chapel will have an opportunity to score again before the end of the first quarter. Out of bounds with 0.9 seconds remaining. Point Fox Chapel will keep possession. Period, right yeah. As Will Collins and Alex Pitcher checking into the game. The deep three to end the quarter does not hit. No, it does not, but it was a valiant effort. So with that, it looks like uh, Fox Chapel Foxes are up 11 to nine on the Central Catholic Vikings JV. And we will move on to the second period here shortly. In a rush? Make Applebee's to go your go-to. Just order online or download the app today and pick it up curbside when you text, I've arrived. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood at participating locations. Welcome to Helltown. Helltown Brewing is a craft brewery focused on making quality beer. They use specialty grains for all of their beers and aren't sparing when it comes to hops. Helltown is brewed locally in Export and Mount Pleasant, or as it was once referred to during the Whiskey Rebellion of 1794 as Helltown, and was later dubbed the zip code of 15666. Check them out at any of their four Pennsylvania tap rooms located in Export, Houston, Mount Pleasant, and Pittsburgh Strip District. Helltownbrewing.com. Helltown Brewing reminds you to always drink. Do you have a Rolex, Tudor, Omega, or other Swiss-made watch? If so, you'll need to care for it with regular maintenance and repairs to keep it in tip-top shape. Or perhaps you've noticed yours isn't keeping time well, has cracks or broken parts, or maybe you're not confident. Welcome back to Central Catholic Vikings basketball. JV came in progress right now. Fox Chat Foxes up 11 to nine in the second period over the Central Catholic Vikings. Just a back and forth battle here between two high caliber JV teams. Definitely, it, two very skilled teams picking their spots. Uh, a lot of great defense in this game, Ryan. Just terrific defense. Central's such a defensively sound team in which they're able to deny opportunities into the basket and contest almost every shot as that shot was very contested and forces the miss. But it's an open three-pointer and they nail it. And that was number 24, Eric Wilson for the Fox Chapel Foxes. It's David Fleming's going to bring it up the floor. Pitcher down low. Collins can't get it to go. Yeah, he had a great line inside there, and he just could not get that shot to, to drop. The five-point lead for Fox Chapel, largest lead of the game. Three-point by Fox Chapel, in and out. Pitcher with the rebound. Mason thought almost like an awkward shot. Yeah. Miraculously banks off the backboard and goes in. Kind of a fadeaway, maybe a hook, it looked like. Uh, but yeah, definitely got it to go in. Nevertheless, cuts the lead to three. Fox Chapel trying to find some sort of offense now. They nailed that three on the last possession. Driving inside. Foul going to be called on the floor. Yeah, that looks like that's going to be called on Petrunia. Yes, Nick Petrunia going to be called for the foul. 
And that was just kind of a, a hip check there as he drove past him. So inbounding for Fox Chapel. Swing it here and trying to find an offensive rhythm, Fox Chapel. Well, I mean, I'll say this much for Fox Chapel. So far, I mean, I have to say that they've dominated possession of the ball. Yes, absolutely. They've just taken their time, set up what they want, wait until they have a shot they want to take. They're not forcing anything. Very disciplined team. Kicking inside. That one's foul going to be called. Yeah, that's a close foul, but uh, they're going to go ahead and call it. And that's going to put Central Catholic at three fouls. So it'll be three fouls apiece for both teams. So now Fox Chapel going to inbound it from underneath the basket. Again, they're going to have to kick it out. Again, I mean, it, it very disciplined, not taking wild shots, setting things up. But then finally gets the open three-pointer. And that is Asher White. And, and that is that is his second three-pointer of the game. And that's something it definitely Fox Chapel was wanting to have it. Take their time and just wait for the open shot. Absolutely. I mean, it, it seems like that has been their strategy the whole time, Ryan. And it's working. 17 to 11, they're up right now in the first half. That's going to be an off-ball foul for Fox Chapel. Called a number 23. That's going to put James them Hanna. At, it's going to put them at four. Collins switches over to Mason. Mason trying to find something as he gets the screen from pitcher, but Mason can't get inside. Nice move, nice shot. Contested shot, but he gets it up and it's no good. Can't get it to go. Six point lead for Fox Chapel as they're going to have a chance to make it even larger on this Hayden possession. Hayden Kaiser bringing the ball down the court. Going to kick it over. Driving in, that one is no good. Rebound central. That was a hard fought rebound, too. For and that had Catholic. to be the quickest possession Fox Chapel's had today. Easily. As the foul is going to be called, it's going to be a charge. Oh. <laughs> that was a close one, but the officials had a better look at it than we did. So, unfortunately, uh, aggression there on Central Catholic on uh, JV, but just a little bit too aggressive driving, driving to the basket there. As Collins checks out, Evan Kwasinski is going to check in for him. Going to try to hit the deep ball, but Noah Mason going to just intercept it. Yeah, excellent steal there by Mason. And they're trying Picks to it run out. it quickly. Three-pointer. Bang! Evan Kwasinski for three. And that's going to cut the lead to 17-14 now. That one's going to be just taken out of the hands wow. by Noah Mason. And it's going to be a late, looks like a late jump ball called. Yeah, it, it uh. I mean, he just reached right in there and just ripped that right out of his hands. But the officials are going to say that there was enough time there that, to call a jump ball possession. So Central Catholic will get possession and go back on offense, down by three. It's now Ty Waddle going to bring it up the floor. Going to swing it over to Sullivan. Sullivan over to Kwasinski. Back over pitcher, over to Sullivan. Foul's going to be called on the floor, looks like on the, and it will be on Fox Chapel. And that's going to be number six on Fox Chapel in the half. Foul will be called on Mason Miles, and that's going to be his first foul of the game. Now going to inbound it to S Sullivan as he gets a missing on the pump. And instantly but, gets fouled. <laughs> but the foul's going to be called on the floor once again. Yeah. Instantly gets fouled before the, uh, before the shot. But now Central is one away from the bonus with that yeah. being the sixth foul for Fox Chapel. Wait, they are in the bonus right now because that was their seventh foul. Yeah. And it'll be a one and one for Sullivan. A bit confusion down there on the court. 
So one and one. Sullivan is two for four from the line today. Drains it. Cuts a lead to two. Every point matters, so this is a massive free throw. He nails it. And now he's four for six from the line. One point lead for the Foxes now. Three minutes left in the half. Gonna swing it over. Gonna try to find something. Drive it in. That shot. The foul will be called on the floor, though. And that's yeah, a, it is going to be a floor foul on number 10. So that's going to be against Noah Mason. That's Noah's first of the game. And he shook his head in agreement. He agrees that he uh, he was the culprit on that one. Yes, easy call to make. He admits to it. Everyone in the building knows it is. Is that's a three-pointer and again hits from three. And, and absolutely Fox. wide open there, too. Yes, Fox Chapel is just hitting these open threes of which they are getting. Thomas Patterson, and that is also his second of the game. Thomas looking to set up a play as he kicks it over to Mason. Vikings down by four. Just over two minutes left in the half. Fleming with the ball, but he's going to give it back out to Thomas. He kicks over to Fleming, mid-range, no Ooh, good. In and out. That's going to be a foul called on number 24, Cole Sullivan. So that's going to put Central Catholic to six. And with that being Cole's second foul of the game, they're going to bring back in pitcher. And as long with pitcher, Noah's going to, Mason going to check out, and Nick Petrunia going to check in. And Central Catholic back on the press. Excellent pressure. Just applying the intense pressure in which Central does. Three-pointer. Hits everything except the rim. Uh-oh. So Are they going to call jump ball? No, it looks like it's going to be a foul called a foul. on okay. Fox Chapel. It'll be a one and one for David Fleming from the line. So 143 left in the game. Fleming on the line, shooting one for one. Fox Chapel down by four, can cut the lead here. Free throw is up and good. Nails it. Second free throw, no good. Back of the rim. Pressure's on. And they're going to call a foul on that one. So that is going to put Fox Chapel at the line. For one for one. Yep, one and one opportunity with that being their seventh foul today. Very physical, very high fouling. First yeah, and, and I think that a part of that is, uh, you know, these are both very physical teams. They're both aggressive when they want to be. And uh, they both play tremendous tight defense. Yes, just great physicality, which is something you see on all levels of the, for the team. So only gets one there. Fox Chapel up 21-17. Looks like we're going to have a jump ball call. That will go Fox Chapel's way, or it won't. Central, Central had possession right there. Okay. So Tom is going to bring it up the floor. So a minute 30 left in the game. Central Catholic down by four. Driving inside. Kuzinski, awkward shot, can't get it to go, and Fox Chapel's going to come up with possession. I mean, there was four red shirts down there. And they are going to waste as much time as imaginable, I would, I would guess, here. Yes. We've seen them hold the ball for many and 10 second possessions, which is how long it's remaining in the half. Driving in, he's going to be fouled, but that one's going to go in, but it's going to be called on the floor, I do believe and it is. Yeah, that's going to be a floor foul. So 
So less than a minute left. Fox Chapel at the line, up by four. The first three from no good, and Krasinski comes up with the rebound. And they're looking to push the... Thomas driving in, and great basket for Xavier Thomas. Excellent basket there, drove hard to the basket as soon as he got the ball. And that's swatted away by Pitcher. I was gonna say, that's very close to a travel there, but they didn't call it. And uh, Fox Chapel, uh, number five there, fell into the stands, but he's okay. Caden Grail. And he is going to go to the line, it looks like. For a one and one. Central Catholic's coach arguing the call, but uh, and they're going to have a line foul here. So Fox Chapel had somebody over the line in position there, so they lose possession of the ball. Skrzynski's going to inbound it to Thomas. 35 seconds left. Down by two. Pitcher faked the pass to Petrini, but now he's going to give it up to him. And I have to, I'm not in the minds of the Central Catholic kids down there or the Fox Chapel kids, but uh, I have to assume that that foul was intentional just to get him to the line. Yeah. Because he was no doubt scoring on that. Yes, definitely. Just try to. There was nobody down there to stop him. As Petrunia misses the free throw, but it's going to be coming up by David Fleming. See, his floater shot is no good either. It's going to be a foul called on Pitcher. And Pitcher sort of disagrees with that one. I, I don't blame him. <laughs> a lot of fouls have been called here in the last two minutes of the game. Or, I'm sorry, of the, of the half. So... 19 fouls total in this first half. Which yeah. is just a I don't boatload. think I've seen that in a, in a, in a while for, for any game, whether it's JV or varsity, but uh, that's the way the officials are calling the game. So number 24, Eric Wilson drains that one, putting Fox Chapel up by three, and he has a chance to put them up by four with this basket. That one is and he cool. does. So 13 seconds left, Central Catholic. Let's see if they can cut this lead. Krasinski gonna kick over to Fleming, back out to Krasinski. Two seconds, one second, as he gets fouled. And that's, we're gonna call a travel. Well, he thought he got fouled, but he should wait for the whistle. So he took the extra step and he got called for traveling instead. That is a mental mistake. And we've all done it whenever we've played basketball. So with that, from Alumni Hall, Fox Chapel Foxes are up 23 to 19 on your Central Catholic Vikings. My name's Kyle, that's Ryan. We're going to half and we'll be back here shortly. Workspace Solutions is true to their name. They are experts at helping customers find the perfect office furniture and workspace solutions. They can manage the entire process from design and planning to installation. As a leading independent dealer in the Pittsburgh region, Workspace Solutions focus is to meet your needs with friendly and efficient service. You can visit them online at wsioffice.com. With Eaton Park Takeout, you can make any place the place for smiles. A picnic at the park, lunch on the go, or dinner in a movie. When you have Eaton Park Takeout, no matter where you go, smiles are sure to follow. At Hello Bistro, we build salads like you've never seen. With over 50 fresh toppings and 15 dressings, the only limit is your imagination. Build your own or order one of our salad masterpieces. Hello Bistro. Eat awesome. Ace, a skilled sharpshooter in their respective tradecraft. Do you have what it takes to be an ace?
Located in Homestead, Pennsylvania at the Bank on 8th, Ace Axe Throwing is the place where you and your friends can throw axes, drink, have fun, and compete to become an ace. Open Monday through Sunday. Book your tickets online today at www.aceaxthrowing.com. Discover who the ace really is. At Henny Jewelers, we know that jewelry is used for so many things, to celebrate moments and people in your lives and to express your personality. That's why we offer custom design services for those times you need something extra special or unique. Thanks to our highly skilled and experienced jewelers, we can create whatever your hearts desire. From updating family heirlooms to designing one-of-a-kind piece for any style and budget, here's how it works. You contact us and tell us what you'd like to create, providing pictures and ideas. We develop a plan and begin designing the piece, tweaking and modifying until it's perfect. Then we create the piece. Our jewelers are truly some of the best in the industry, artists who work their magic to create a masterpiece just for you. From using your grandmother's diamond for your dream engagement ring, or to designing a ring to match one you saw on Pinterest, the possibilities are endless. Dream it, pin it, save it, envision it, and we'll create it. Custom design at Henny Jewelers. Get started today. Henny Jewelers, your jewelers for life. In a rush? Make Applebee's to go your go-to. Just order online or download the app today and pick it up curbside when you text, I've arrived. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood at participating locations. Welcome to Helltown. Helltown Brewing is a craft brewery focused on making quality beer. They use specialty grains for all of their beers and aren't sparing when it comes to hops. Helltown is brewed locally and export in Mount Pleasant, or as it was once referred to during the Whiskey Rebellion of 1794 as Helltown, and was later dubbed the zip code of 15666. Check them out at any of their four Pennsylvania tap rooms, located in Export, Houston, Mount Pleasant, and Pittsburgh Strip District. Helltownbrewing.com. Helltown Brewing reminds you to always drink responsibly.
Welcome back to Central Catholic Vikings JV Basketball. My name's Kyle Templin. Right next to me is Ryan Meredith. And we got Emma, Joe, JP, and Tom working on cameras, working behind the scenes. Ryan, we're not used to this. No, absolutely packed yes. house here for a JV matchup. Packed All house. And we're, and we're Central losing by four, but they're still very much in this game. Yeah, packed house, which we don't normally see for JV. I've never seen the student section so this big. And yeah, and we're not used to seeing a team come in here and manhandle the JV team, but they are. Cent you know, Central Catholic right now is down by four. Fox Chapel, the Foxes came in here. They're up by, you know, four. 23 to 19 is the score. We're getting ready to go into the second half. And all I'll say about this game is, is that it's been very physical. Yeah. Thomas Patterson and Eric Wilson for Fox Chapel, they both have nine. All those points are from three. Yeah. So the well, three ball is definitely hitting for Fox Chapel. Well, and what I'll say about Fox Chapel is, is that they're very disciplined with the ball. They wait for their shot, and when they get it, they're typically wide open. Yes. Long possessions was a theme of the first half for Fox Chapel. Yeah, and I assume that we'll see the same theme going in here. If you're Central Catholic, Ryan, what do you do? You gotta, you gotta do that. You gotta get quick steals. You gotta like be aggressive. Get the steals. Try to force turnovers. And uh, it looks like uh, on that one, it's not going to go their way. It's, I think, I think every central player, including the coaching staff, all <laughs> saw it tip off the Fox Chapel player. I, th I think we saw it too they here, were Ryan. All quick to put their hands up. <laughs> I think we saw it too here, Ryan. Unfortunately, the the, the officials saw it a different way. So. <laughs> This is going to be a travel call. So Fox Chapel will get the ball back. Or I'm sorry, uh, Central Catholic will get the ball back as a travel there on Fox Chapel. Felt miscommunication here by the officials to where to inbound the ball. But no Mason will inbound it right in front of the Fox Chapel bench. And Tom is going to bring it up the floor. Driving in, Kwasinski going to be fouled, and he'll go to the line for two. And that was a good foul there, too. He definitely got hit in the head on that one on the way up. Evan Kwasinski had five points in the first half. Strong drive to the basket, though. He saw his opening, and he took it, and the Fox, Fox Chapel defender only had one call there, and that was the foul. So go to the line for two. So he makes the first. Cuts the lead to a one-possession game. Second free throw is no good. But the hustle by Kwasinski to get the ball, but just going to end up in Fox Chapel's hands. Unfortunately, but it was incredible hustle. So Fox Chapel now basically doing their thing, taking their time. and it, Oh, nice steal. And another one by Noah Mason. He's been stealing the ball all over the place today as he goes coast to coast. Coast to coast and a beautiful finger roll there to put it into the basket and to cut the lead to one. As he has, he has four points on the day, Noah Mason. So Central Catholic, their answer to this uh, Fox Chapel offense is to get in between the ball. Yes, get go for the steals, because that one's going to be off of Fox Chapel and be Central Ball. And you, as you can see, every time there's a pass, even if they don't get the skill, a player's jumping, trying to get in between the lane. Yeah, tremendous amount of hustle from uh, Fox Chapel that we're seeing out there and from Central Catholic. But Central Catholic, that seems to be the kryptonite to the Fox Chapel offense there is to get in between the ball and the defenders. Looks like we're going to take a timeout here. And that's going to be taken by Fox Chapel. So we will be right back here shortly with more Central Catholic Vikings basketball. Does your ring need to be resized? Do you have a chain or other jewelry that's broken? At Henny Jewelers, we're proud to offer jewelry repair services right on site. From resetting diamonds to sizing, soldering, clasp repair, bead restringing, and more. Our highly skilled and experienced jewelers are some of the best in the industry with over 80 years of combined experience. We'll work with you to get your jewelry repaired quickly with top customer service and a name you can trust. Contact Henny today. Henny Jewelers, your jewelers for life. Welcome back to Central Catholic Junior Varsity Basketball. My name is Kyle Temple and next to me is Ryan Meredith. And right now, the Fox Chapel Foxes are up by one, 23 to 22 here in the third period. Just about five and a half minutes left in the period and Central Catholic will go on offense to try to take the lead. Pitcher down low, gonna swing across the long pass to Kaczynski. 
Excellent inside pass. Sullivan had to pass the pitcher, but he's not gonna make it. Excellent defense. Central Catholic coming up with the ball, nice. Then he's gonna say, touch the line there, and I do believe he's right. Yes, says Fox Chapel will get the ball. So Fox Chapel will take over. I'm gonna have to beat Central's press. It's gonna be a deep ball, and they will beat it right away. Is it a Hail Mary pass? And it doesn't get the basket to go, but they get the offensive rebound. That one doesn't go either. As it seemed like sort of Central's players were fighting with themselves for that rebound. And I did not see the call from the official there. It is Fox Chapel ball. It is Fox Chapel ball, okay. Did not see his hand go in a direction. So, all right. Fox Chapel back on offense. Five minutes left in the game, up by one. Trying to find something. Three ball. That and one's good. Drains it. It's number 15, Thomas Patterson. That will be his third three pointer of the day. He has 12 points on the day now. All three. Sullivan back out to Mason. So Central Catholic again up by four. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Fox Chapel again up by four. Driving in pitcher can't get it to go. Yeah, we're starting to see a lot of that from Central Catholic where the shooting opportunities are there, but they just cannot get anything to hit the net right now. And I feel like frustration is starting to set in for some of the players. Sort of seems like there's a lid on top of the basket for Central. Almost. Yeah, sometimes that happens. I mean, it, you know, it happens to the best of teams. We've all seen it before, but uh, yeah, you just got to keep shooting. Fox Chapel back on offense, up by four. I mean, the, the good news is is that uh, Central Deep pass. That one's going to be Central Catholic has played tremendous defense to be able to keep this game close so far. Central's going to take possession. Krasinski's going to bring it up the court. Evans Krasinski clicks over to David Fleming. Over to Krasinski. Sullivan going down low to pitcher. Going to kick it back to Sullivan, and it's nice a terrific pass. pass. And he gets and the and one. one. And this place just erupts. So four minutes left in the period. Down by two, he gets to put him, gets the, he gets an opportunity to cut the lead to one. And now that's two fouls on Fox Chapel. That free throw is good. Drains it. One point lead by Fox Chapel. Dribbling all over the place, gonna kick it out. The extra pass, not gonna shoot it. Just drive it in. That shot's up, he's gonna be fouled. He'll go to the line for two free throws. That's Central's first foul of the second half. And that is going to be number 20, Caden Kaiser, who is a freshman, go to the line. That's, pitcher, that's pitcher's third foul of the day, so definitely something to watch out for. Because he's going to check out, and Nick Petruna is going to check in. Yeah. And Will Collins will check in as Xavier Thomas will check out. The free throw is up, no good. Excellent rebound there. They're going to have the Hail Mary pass to Fleming, who thought about shooting the three, but he's not, and they're going to slow it down. So that one's going to be taken away by Fox Chapel. It's going to be a jump ball. And Central has possession. So Central retains possession, down by two. Just over three minutes and 30 seconds left in the third period. So we get some substitutions for Fox Chapel. Collins with the ball at the top. Ball tip, but into Sullivan's hands. Kuzinski driving and nails it. And that ties the game 27 to 27. And they and get a the steal. steal. 
three-pointer for the lead. Bang! Wow! Ice cold. Cole Sullivan drills the three. That was clutched by Cole Sullivan. Now Central Catholic up 30 to 27 here in Alumni Hall. That one no good. And now the momentum is swinging, Ryan. Petrunia three-pointer. Can't get it to go, but rebound, but David rebound. Fung. Kwasinski three-pointer. That one no good. But it's going to be taken away by the Vikes, but it's on the ground. It's going to be a jump ball. Fox Chapel will have possession. They'll have possession, but tremendous hustle and effort there by Central Catholic, and you have to think right now the Central Catholic Vikings are in the driver's seat for this game. All of that momentum just switched their way and the massive three-pointer by Sullivan. Clutch. We said it earlier, he's a big man and can drill threes. Yes, yes he can, and it's very deceiving, but he can definitely do it. Excellent pressure there by Central Catholic. Now Fox Chapel trying to counter. Three-pointer, in and out. Ends up into the hands of Petrunia. He's gonna be fouled, and that's it. Easy call to make. That was very easy for them to make. And that's going to be the third foul with two minutes left in the third period on the Fox Chapel Foxes. This call is going to bring it up the floor. Go swing it over. Kwasinski, the Fleming. He gets it to Excellent go. Excellent pass there by number three, Will Collins. And Cole, Excellent pass. And Cole Sullivan now gets into double ditches with 11 as David Fleming with a terrific defensive play to tip the ball out of bounds on the inbound. And that, again, just keeps the momentum in their favor. Central Catholic up by five in the driver's seat now. Constantly grinding away at that, that lead that Fox Chapel had, and now they're in the driver's seat. Going to bring it up the floor. Fox Chapel going to lose possession of it, but he's going to recover. And David Fleming playing terrific defense. Swatted away. Wow. Cole Sullivan swats it away as they hit Collins. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. What wow. a lay-in by Will wow. Collins. Will Collins is not a tall man, but I'll tell you what, he, he changed hands on that finger roll, and that was a beautiful thing that he just did. What a basket. And this whole place erupted like you would have thought he dunked the basketball. That was absolutely amazing. It was a beautiful, beautiful shot. And the varsity team sitting behind the JV team, and they just lost their mind with that. They can't believe it. It was, it was a tremendous shot. I mean, switching hands, the finger roll behind the back. I mean, it was, it was amazing. And now the lead's expanding. Central Catholic up now, up by seven, 34 to 27. Just over a minute left in the third period. Gonna swing it over. And now if you're Fox Chapel, they have to play a different game now, right? They cannot be as patient as they have been. He's gonna get fouled, but he's not gonna make the basket, but he'll go to the line for two free throws. So their game plan has always been, we'll hold, we'll hold until we get the right shot. Now if you're Central, if you're Fox Chapel, kind of have to press a little bit now. Yeah, got to gotta force some things, got to force some turnovers. And still, I wouldn't say go completely away. No. Don't just try to take ill-advised, like completely no. contested shots. But you got to think you can't have these minute-long possessions. No. It, so far, that has not gone their way. And part of that has just been, you know, as we were saying, there was a period of time where Central Catholic just could not make a basket. And they just kept shooting, they kept grinding away, and that finally paid off for them. And Eric Wilson has 11 now with that who's made free throws. Fox Chapel now has to do that same thing, is they have to keep picking their shots. But you're right, they cannot sit there and hold the ball for minutes at a Petrini time. Petrini gets a lane as he misses it, but a terrific hustle play by Noah Mason to get the basket. And I have to wonder if it's, if it's really conditioning at this point because it seems like the Fox Chapel team is tired. Like they're not hustling for as many rebounds as they were before. Yes, we know how conditioned and how athletic this central team is. Yes. Yes, that is one of the that is one of the foundations 
of Central Catholic basketball, whether it's at a freshman level, a JV level, or a varsity level, is to be conditioned for the game. As Noah Mason will inbound the ball with the press on, gonna get it to Collins. Yeah, first time we've seen Fox Chapel put the press on. Yes, it works so well for Central, they're gonna try to run it themselves. Tight defense now for Fox Chapel. As Ty Wall is just gonna lose possession of it. Fox Chapel will come up with it. Press now on. Very aggressive defense for Central. Three-pointer, it's good with four seconds to go. As they inbound to Petrunia. Petrunia almost so nails So that the is the end quarter. of three, and now Central Catholic has turned the tables. They are up 36 to 32 over the Fox Chapel Foxes, and we will be right back for your fourth and final quarter here shortly. Workspace Solutions is true to their name. They are experts at helping customers find the perfect office furniture and workspace solutions. They can manage the entire process from design and planning to installation. As a leading independent dealer in the Pittsburgh region, Workspace Solutions' focus is to meet your needs with friendly and efficient service. You can visit them online at wsioffice.com. Welcome back to Central Catholic's Junior Varsity Basketball. My name is Kyle Temple, and next to me is Ryan Meredith. As that one's gonna be taken away by Fox Chapel. In transition, he gets the lay in. Oh, and that is gonna cut the lead now down to two. And the press is on, and it looks like they're gonna call timeout. Very smart call there by Central Catholic. I felt like the momentum was going in the favor of Fox Chapel. Call the timeout, regroup, get the momentum going back in your favor. 30-second timeout. And of course, Central trying to build on that momentum that they had in that end of the third quarter where they just nailed that three by Cole Sullivan, which just changed the complete aspect of the game. Yeah, that was a clutch three that he shot there and, and made. And then not only that, but we watched epic basketball by this junior varsity team. You can't tell by the score, 36 to 34. I feel like this has been a high intensity game this whole time just because of the physicality and just because of the the intense defense that's been played in this game. Yes, if you would have told me this is two varsity teams playing, I would have believed you. Yeah, absolutely. They're playing at a varsity level right now. High pressure. Central Catholic up, 36-34. Just over six and a half minutes left in the game. And Central Catholic on offense. We're hearing some chanting from the Fox Chapel crowd. As now Sullivan gonna kick out to Petrunia, three-pointer. Can't get it, Off but Sullivan rim. gets the rebound. Sullivan, huge rebound there, he's and he's going to get fouled. And Sullivan has 11 points on the day. That big three-pointer, as we mentioned earlier, he is electrifying. Hey, he's, having, he's having one heck of a game, that is for sure. And Central Catholic now going to stay on offense. Get some substitutions here for Fox Chapel. Tom is going to inbound it, Just trying to find someone. Going to hit Mason. Thomas, fade away, can't hit the shot. That's what, it's going to end up in, again, another offensive rebound so for right Central. There. Excellent, excellent rebound and put in. That right there was Central Catholic out hustling Fox Chapel under the basket. Just terrific, terrific job. Fox Chapel up now by four, 38-34, with just under six minutes left in the game. Gonna swing it over. Trying to find some sort of offense. Gonna kick it over. Fox Chapel trying to... So still staying true to their style, where they 
He's going to lose possession. He's on the ground, but it's going to be taken out of his hands by Ty Waldo. Just rips it out of him. And in transition, Nick Petrunia. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, that was a hard card to the basket by Nick Petrunia, and he let that defender know it. And Ty Waldo, when the player was on the ground, he just ripped the ball out of his Great hands. Great awareness by him. Great awareness. Central Catholic, five minutes left in the game, up 40 to 34. Vikings right now with the momentum in the game. And almost a steal again. It's going to be a foul called. It, it was a close call. <laughs> Fouls now looking at four for Central, five for Fox Chapel. Just under five minutes left. Vikings up by six. Gonna try a deep ball out as he's gonna hit it. But trying to save it from the over and back, and she's gonna throw it out of bounds. It'll be central ball. Yeah, unfortunately, that, uh, you know, we haven't, I'll say this, we haven't seen a lot of mental mistakes in this game. There have been a couple, but not as many as you would expect from a JV game, and that was one that was, that was definitely by Fox Chapel there. It's Thomas with the ball, gonna bring it up. Kicks it over to Mason. Noah Mason, mid-range from the free throw line. Can't hit it, but Cole Sullivan, another offensive rebound for him yeah, today. Yeah, he is just out hustling the world right now. Fighting double teams, fighting for his way inside underneath the basket. I mean, he is just a man possessed. Thomas, the point guard. That one's gonna be taken away in transition. They're going to get the easy lay-in. And that was one of those times where I will tell you that that was a telegraph pass and that was a mental mistake for Central Catholic. It's now Kuzinski going to bring it up the floor. Central Catholic still up by four, 40 to 36, four minutes left. It's now Mason trying to kick down low, but he's going to be fouled hard. And he's very frustrated with that. Well, he's been taking a lot of abuse underneath the basket. He has been, but he's been taking it in stride. And you can tell that he's a little winded down there right now because he's been fighting so hard underneath the basket. I mean, we've seen him fight for rebounds, fight for passes, fight for shots. He's been doing it all underneath there. Good inbound to Nicole Sullivan. He's gangling at contact, but that one's going to be ripped out of his hands, and Fox Chapel's going to bring it the other way. Swing it over. Going to try to drive in. Jumper. It's good. And that is going to cut the lead to two. Vikings up by 240 to 38 with three minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. So now this starting to shift back to Fox Chapel. The momentum here. Let's see if Central can hold it off. That's now Sullivan offensive rebound again and gets it to go. And he I'll tell you what. on the dame and a timeout for Fox Chapel. That's probably a good call for Fox Chapel's sake because I think that they just, Central Catholic just crushed their momentum. And I'm, sure, and I'm sure Cole Sullivan's happy to have a little bit of a break. Absolutely, absolutely. He's been working down there for sure. Three minutes and 19 seconds left. Central Catholic up 42 to 38 and we are gonna go to commercial and we will be right back. With Eaton Park Takeout, you can make any place the place for smiles. A picnic at the park, lunch on the go, or dinner in a movie. When you have Eaton Park Takeout, no matter where you go, smiles are sure to follow. At Hello Bistro, we build salads like you've never seen. With over 50 fresh toppings and 15 dressings, the only limit is your imagination. Build your own or order one of our salad masterpieces. Hello Bistro. Eat awesome. Ace, a skilled sharpshooter in their respective tradecraft. Do you have what it takes to be an ace? Located in Homestead, Pennsylvania at the Bank on 8th, Ace Axe Throwing is the place where you and your friends can throw axes, drink, have fun, and compete to become an ace. Open Monday through Sunday. Book your tickets online today at www.asaxthrowing.com. Welcome back to Alumni Hall for Fox, I'm sorry, for Central Catholic Vikings basketball. My name's Kyle, this is Ryan, and Fox Chapel right now down by two with possession of the ball, 
42 to 38. Three minutes left in the game. This is a nail biter, Ryan. Yes, just very exciting, very elusive. Cole Sullivan has been a superstar today. He's on the bench getting a well deserved breather as they drill that three. And, and that's a perfect point. Just as you think Central has taken the momentum and sort of pushing it out, Fox Chapel comes back with a huge basket. Pitcher to counter, can't make the three. But Mason gonna get a, end up with the ball. After and that's huge around. to get that offensive or to get that offensive rebound there. Yes, massive as Kwasinski. Over to Fleming. Fleming, deep three ball. In and out, in and but out. Pitcher gets the rebound. That one's no good. But and he's gonna be fouled. Gonna be and I'll tell you what, Pitcher comes in and he had the same intensity that Sullivan had whenever he left. And now Central is in the bonus. So definitely something to watch out for. So Pitcher's gonna go to the line for one and one. Up by one, the Vikings right now are up by one, 42 to 41, two minutes and 34 seconds left in the game. And now, and now Sullivan back in the game. Boy, this is amazing. The Fox Chapel student session getting loud with Central. I, I've Dead never side. seen a JV game this intense. Team nails it. 43 to 41. This next one's big. Every basket matters. That one's good. Clutch shooting. Clutch shooting there by the Central Catholic Vikings, up by three now. Two minutes, 34 seconds left in the game, and it is still anybody's game, Ryan. Yes, very anyone's game. Fox Chapel, they're only down by three, and we know how well they shoot the three ball. Absolutely, and they're very good at timing their shots, making sure they always get the open man. But they also don't need a force of three. An inside and a hard foul there. And that is number 24 going to the line, Eric Wilson, who drove really hard to the basket there and came down really hard. Foul on number 10, Noah Mason. The free throw, no good. The second free throw, that one's good. And I'll cut the lead to two as Fox Chapel is going to call a timeout. So right now, Central Catholic Vikings 44, Fox Chat Foxes 42, and we're looking at a full minute timeout here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go to break. We'll be back here shortly for Central Catholic Vikings basketball. In a rush? Make Applebee's to go your go-to. Just order online or download the app today and pick it up curbside when you text, I've arrived. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood at participating locations. Welcome to Helltown. Helltown Brewing is a craft brewery focused on making quality beer. They use specialty grains for all of their beers and aren't sparing when it comes to hops. Helltown is brewed locally in Export and Mount Pleasant, or as it was once referred to during the Whiskey Rebellion of 1794 as Helltown, that was later dubbed the zip code of 15666. Check them out at any of their four Pennsylvania tap rooms located in Export, Houston, Mount Pleasant, and Pittsburgh Strip District. Helltownbrewing.com. Helltown Brewing reminds you to always drink responsibly. Welcome back to Alumni Hall for Central Catholic Vikings Junior Varsity Basketball. 44 to 42, the Vikings are up. Two minutes left in the game, just over. Vikings on offense, but right now we are, we've seen this lead change a number of times. It's just back and forth. No one has seemed to take full control. Everyone just back and forth. Two evenly matched teams just fighting it out. And this is where disciplined ball handling matters. That one's. The foul's gonna be called on pitcher. He's gonna disagree with it. It's hard for me to argue against him because now, he did push. And he's so. out. That's his fifth foul. Yeah. And he's done for today. That's a tough need, loss there for. They need uh, one more player out there. That's a tough loss for Central Catholic. With pitcher with pitcher being on the bench, he played a, a very good game, but you know, 
sometimes whenever you have intense defensive matches like this, some of these guys are going to end up fouling out. Great game, though, by pitcher. A minute 55, Central up two. Central easing up on the press. Interesting. They're one away from the bonus, so you might want to say they want to like keep it sort of lay back. Yeah, There's that's a good call. Boxing them in. And, and terrific defense by Xavier Thomas. He's a defensive back on the football team, and he was playing excellent defense to tip that ball away. He did a great job at it. He thought that he might have regained possession for the Vikings, but the official says no. Ball goes back to Fox Chapel. Going to inbound it. Going to try to hit a deep one. That one's going to be way back, and they're going to have to bring it all the way up the floor again. Going to try to look Minute inside. They're going to find a man inside. He's going to be fouled. He'll go to the line for two free throws and a chance to tie this ball game up. And that's a good foul there by Central Catholic. I hate to say that, but it, it really is because without him going over there and fouling him, there was nobody else around. He was going to make that basket. Make him earn it at the line, especially this late in the game. The free throw is good. As Nick Petrini is going to check out a David Fleming, actually, Yes, Petrini's going to check out, and David Fleming comes back in. You, David Fleming, a sharp shooter and a terrific defender, so definitely a good call to bring him into the game. The second free throw. No good. Rebound Sullivan. It's massive miss there by He's Mark had Chappell. a tremendous game. I have to say, if, if I was going to give somebody the game ball, it would definitely be Sullivan tonight. Over to Fleming. Fleming looking for something. Taking their time. Going to drive in Thomas. He's going to be fouled. They're going to call it on the oh, floor. They're going to call off the shot. Wow. Wow. It's going to be a one and one opportunity. I thought for sure that was an and one. I did too. I could. He was in the process of shooting, I, in yeah. my opinion. <laughs> but re yeah. Well. We're he not gets the ones one for one at the line. Yeah, the officials got a better view than we do up here. So, it's not Thomas. Xavier Thomas missed the free throw, but Cole Sullivan with the rebound. We're gonna kick it across the court, and they're gonna slow it down. Absolutely, Waste some great time. call. Great call. Take your time. Get last shot. Don't give them an opportunity. Make them foul you. Yes, absolutely. And they will foul him, as Noah Mason will go to the line now. And two massive free throws. He's Noah one Mason, one. another guy this game that has been grinding the entire game, doing the hard work underneath the basket. Mason has six points, but compared, his hustle makes it seem like he has 20. Yeah. He, it seems like he's all over the court. Nails it. Clutch, is, clutch free throw there. That is absolutely clutch. And so that puts them up by two, and if they can add on, then that forces Fox Chapel into a three-point situation. The free throw. No good. Fox Chapel going to be down by two with 45 seconds remaining now. You wonder if Fox Chapel wants to score before time in case they do miss, try to get a shot off before the time expires or they want to wait for the last shot. It seems like that is. Is a foul going to be called? It is They're a foul. They're going to say it's Mason, even though it sort of seemed like Mason just got, Mason's not as big as number 35. No, he, he had nothing. Miles Mason, he had, and he sort of got knocked over. The only thing that he could do there was just uh, try to hold his position, and he did not have the lane, so they're going to. But Miles Mason will shoot two free throws. First one's good, so he'll get the second to t and an opportunity to tie the game up. With 26.5 seconds to go, this is the biggest free throw of the game. This is whatever kid of dreams of. As he misses it, rebound Sullivan. As Tom is going to bring it up the floor. You 22 they, seconds left. I think they would foul as soon as he gets across half court. And it looks like that's does. what they're going to do. As Thomas will go to the line. And it will be two free throws automatically for him with Dallas Fox Chapel having 10 fouls. 
17.7 seconds left, 45 to 44. Central Catholic at the line with the lead by one. Gonna have some substitutions here. Oh, I'm gonna wait on this. Free throw is good. Clutch. And that's gonna make it a two point lead. And now this free throw. The biggest of freshman Xavier Thomas's career here at Central. Yeah, this could really extend the lead for them. As he drills it, bounced off the rim and in. Goes in, 17.7 seconds left. Fox is down by set by three. You think if it gets to your timeout, Fox Chapel. Timeout. <laughs> the coach down there was uh, was uh, yelling at the official for timeout. He thinks he should have gotten some more time on the clock and, for that. And you would have to think they need to set up the three. three. They'll run some screens, try to get one of their guys open. I think that that's a smart move, Ryan. But I think that what I think that what Fox Chapel needs to do is do what they do best, right? They have 17 seconds left, so they don't have a lot of time left on the clock, but they're very good at making sure that they get an open man and holding possession of the ball. They and definitely are gonna do that and coming you out. I think it would wanna be in one of the two players' hands of Eric Wilson or Thomas Patterson. It seems to be that's who 11, they try to go to, absolutely. Having 12 and 11, respectively. Yeah. And if they can, and nailing threes all throughout the first half and the second half. So well, Patterson, I think all of his points are from three yes, points, right? Yeah, it seems yeah. like that. Yeah, so I, I, I think that's the guy that they're probably gonna push the ball into his hands. Um, the varsity team is out here looking on. They're excited. The student section is excited. Same goes for Fox Chapel varsity section coming out of the opposing locker room yeah. to see this final. Absolutely. Both, both stands, Fox Chapel and Central Catholic both into the game. 14.4 seconds left. Here we go. I don't know if my heart can take this. This is what you play basketball for. Moments like this. He's on the ground. Just time out. As he gets. So the coach thought that there should have been a foul on that play. He's even, very upset. Even though his own player, there was sort of a double screen, and they sort of pinched in on the double screen and yeah. tripped their own player. Yeah, he's very upset, but it's not going to go his way. So with that, we will come back to Central Catholic Vikings basketball shortly. Do you have a Rolex, Tudor, Omega, or other Swiss-made watch? To keep your watch in tip-top shape, trust Henny Jewelers for your watch repair needs. Our master watchmaker, Chris Travelstead, has decades of experience. He works his magic every week in our state-of-the-art watch repair center, right on site at our Shadyside location. From replacing batteries to water testing and other watch repairs, including full overhauls, you can count on Henny Jewelers. Contact us today and tell us about your watch repair needs. Henny Jewelers, your jewelers for life. With Eaton Park Takeout, you can make any place the place for smiles. A picnic at the park, lunch on the go, or dinner in a movie. When you have Eaton Park Takeout, no matter where you go, smile. Welcome back to Alumni Hall, where we have a very intense junior varsity game between the Central Catholic Vikings and the Fox Chapel Foxes. 13.9 seconds left. Central Catholic up 47 to 44. Fox Chapel with the ball. Ryan, I think you're getting some gray hair. Yes, very stressful here to end the game. As they get it inbounds, it's gonna be, Thomas gonna go a little far, three pointer. Good. Are you kidding me? But Thomas gonna bring it up the floor. Tie game, 47 to 47. Four seconds left. Mason. And that was blocked. And he's Whoa. calling for a foul and he's not gonna get it. I, it. From our angle, it looked like he got fouled, but no call on the floor. And looks like we might be going to overtime. And they were having a discussion about it over there, but I don't think that Central Catholic is gonna get their way. So now we go to overtime. Wow, what a game, Ryan. What an exciting matchup. They drilled that three, and it wasn't an easy three. It was way downtown, contested. And then the Vikes. Yeah. Hand in the face. It was there. I'll tell you what, I, I don't know what to say. And it looks like, oh, it looks like the coach is teed up. Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? And they, Fox Chapel has a technical. And, and there's three, three seconds, seconds left on, on the, the clock. On the clock. He might get kicked out of the game if he keeps going. Are you kidding me? And the 
He's trying to get his kids in line too now. He's upset. It's one thing if he goes out of the game, but he doesn't want any of his players to go out of the game. And now Fox Chapel side losing their mind. So but we'll have to get some order here and figure out what's going on <laughs> in the game. I believe there is a technical foul call on Fox Chapel's head coach. We will see what that translates to here shortly. 30 seconds, 35 seconds left here, and we'll have to get some clarity on what's going on here. I thought it was going into so, overtime, yes. then I saw three seconds left on the clock, then we saw a T thrown. It looks like Central will inbound it. That's the way it looks, right? Yes. They're going to say it went out of bounds because the ball did airball and go out of bounds, and they're going to say it went out of bounds with three seconds to go. So three seconds left. And since it was blocked by Fox Chapel, it would be central possession. And now no Mason saying that he was fouled, and he's wanting the ref to watch for that again. Okay. Point three seconds left. So Point that's what three. it is. Point three seconds so, left. So you don't really have time. You've got to get a tip You don't ball. have time for a shot, no. Because that won't be the end of half. So now we go to overtime. Looks like there was no technical foul called, even though it looked like the motion was made for it. So here we are at Alumni Hall in a back and forth game. Two very physical teams going at it with each other. 47 to 47. I can't believe this, Ryan, but we are going to go to overtime. And all I can say is, is that we'll be back shortly with the excitement of overtime basketball. At Central Catholic, being connected takes on a deeper meaning. Since 1927, these hallowed hallways have been responsible for connecting young men and forging everlasting values. At Central Catholic, being connected means being part of a brotherhood. Men who may come from different backgrounds and have different interests, but men who share a fundamental connection, the Central Catholic Connection. In a rush? Make Applebee's to go your go-to. Just order online or download the app today and pick it up curbside when you text, I've arrived. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood at participating locations. Welcome back to Alumni Hall. My name is Kyle Templin. This is Ryan Meredith, and we are in overtime junior varsity basketball here. Central Catholic Vikings 47, Fox Chapel Foxes 47. And now, essentially, it's just a brand new game. Yes, four minutes ago, you got to think, if you're to coaches, you're telling your players, it's zero to zero. So here we are with the tip off. And unfortunately for Central Catholic, you have pitcher that fouled out. So he is not available for overtime. So they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. Well. I mean, the ball was intercepted already by Fox Chapel. So Fox Chapel will now go on possession. That one's going to be taken away by Noah press. Mason as they give it to Petrunia. Basket good. Nick Petrunia. Massive basket off the steal from Noah Mason. Press still on by Central Catholic, up by two now in overtime with three minutes and 47 seconds. And we'll look at Fox Chapel with possession, taking their time. Something that we saw all day. They wait until they have their shot that they want. Excellent defense there. And they're going to call a foul there. It'll be a one and one. So 35 going to the line. That's. Yes. Mason Miles. Fouls carry over from the second half, so it will be still one and one, but also that means Central is in the bonus already, double bonus. So fouls will be free throws for both teams every time. That one's good. So this is where the conditioning really comes into it, Ryan. Yes. Got when it. you have extra minutes like this in the game. That free throw, no good on the second one. And Sullivan with the rebound, and a terrific job to pass it over to Thomas while he's falling out of bounds. Yeah, excellent It's going to be taken this. away. That one's going to be good. And that will give the Fox Chapel Foxes the lead, 50 to 49. 
Central Catholic now going on offense with just over three minutes left in overtime here at Alumni Hall. Over to Thomas. Thomas gonna kick to Kwasinski. He's gonna kick out, three pointer, air ball, but it's out of bounds off of Fox Chapel. So lucky break there for Central Catholic to retain possession. And you have to figure right now, Sullivan is extremely tired. I mean, he's still down there grinding. As he gets fouled, and Noah Mason will go to the line for two free throws. Noah Mason is another one. That his tank has got to be running on E. Noah Mason has eight points on the day. And wait, they're saying, Cole Sullivan's talking this over. I'm not sure what he was saying, but he was talking to the ref about something. So. The free throw's good. And he's up to not, and he's up to now nine points on the day. So we're tied again at 50 apiece. Under three minutes left. One more free throw. As it's good. Clutch shooting there. Vikings up by one, putting on the press. Gonna bring it up the floor. Gonna try to find something. Can't get it inside. Gonna kick it back out. That one, Petrunia, terrific defense, gonna take it away. And now Sullivan and Mason looking to push it up the floor. Floater, can't get it to go. Rebound Fox Chapel. Just over two minutes left in overtime. Central Catholic Vikings up 51 to 50. Fox Chapel on offense, looking to go ahead. Driving inside, he's going to be fouled. Foul no is going to be called, basket. and they're going to say that is a shooting foul for two. Either way, it doesn't matter. They're in the double bonus. So two, two free throws on every foul for both teams now. Yeah, as as you're right, Ryan. Ten fouls apiece, no good on the free throw, and now they can only tie it with the second attempt. So Petrunia coming out for a rest. As David Fleming comes in. And as you mentioned earlier, this is where hustle and your conditioning comes into play. Second free throw, no good. Rebound Excellent. Fox Chapel though. So offensive rebound there by Miles Mason. Keeps it alive for, for the Foxes. And immediately, they're gonna call a timeout. timeout. So Fox Chapel calls the timeout. One minute, 53 seconds left. Central Catholic Vikings up. 51 to 50, and we will be right back with overtime basketball here at Alumni Hall. Does your ring need to be resized? Do you have a chain that's broken? Are you concerned about bent or weak areas on a bracelet? At Henny Jewelers, we're proud to offer extensive jewelry repair services right on site, thanks to our three jewelers. These jewelers have over 80 years of combined experience as craftsmen. Our process is simple. Contact us via our website or stop in the store to tell us about your jewelry repair needs. We'll evaluate and assess what needs to be done, inspecting the items as necessary. Then we'll provide you with an estimate and time frame for completion. Once you approve, our highly skilled and experienced jewelers will complete the repairs and get your jewelry back. Welcome back to um, Alumni Basketball. Uh, welcome back to Alumni Hall for Central Catholic Vikings Basketball. My name is Kyle. This is Ryan, and we are in overtime. 51 to 50. The Vikings are up, and Fox Chapel looking to inbound the ball. So they will get it up. Excellent get it defense inside. there. Going to kick it out. Going to try to call a play, set up something for Fox Chapel. Come on. Kick it over. Swing it around, back over. They did not, going into the basket. That one's gonna be swatted away. It's gonna be a charge taken. And Cole Sullivan, if he has not played good enough on offense, he just took a charge on defense. What a play. 
And now the Vikes Cole are going to have Sullivan has been the Iron Man, the clutch player for this JV team. He just swung the entire momentum back into Central Catholic's favor by getting grounded and taking that charge. And that's number 12, Eric Wilson, who we mentioned earlier is a sharpshooter and scored a lot of points today, and he's out of the game. Yes. Minute 20 left in the game. Thomas driving. Oh! In and out. He wow! All the way around the rim. Wow! Minute 10 remaining, Central up one. Now, Fox is trying to work inside. Three-pointer. Bang! Wow! Under a minute left. Vikings basketball down by two now in overtime. Got to just run. Timeout Central. And that's a good call there by the coach. So excellent play there by Fox Chapel Foxes. They got their open man on the three-point line. Drain the three. Putting them up by two. This game has been back and forth the entire time, Ryan. I don't know if I can take another lead change here. <laughs> but we definitely want one because we want the Vikings to storm back and take away this win for anything. Just for Cole Sullivan. I mean, the guy <laughs> has been playing out of his mind. He took a charge, hit the floor. He's just been amazing today. Just absolutely dominant on offense and played terrific defense. Had some massive blocks, took a charge. Yeah, that, that's the guy that you give the three stars, you give the game ball to, you give them the whole shebang there because not that there haven't been other players for the Vikings that have played well. There have, but I haven't seen a player, even at the varsity level, that has hustled and played as many minutes tonight as Cole Sullivan. And you have to think Central's trying to set up a play to get the basket. You definitely you don't need a three. You also have enough time where if you don't make the shot, you can still make a defensive stop without without fouling with 49.2 seconds to go. Well, and this is where the grind comes in that we've seen all game. This is where offensive rebounding really matters. Because if you miss the shot, you need to get that rebound and put it back in. As Fleming's gonna inbound the ball. In 49 seconds bench. left. Well, that one's gonna be taken away. Oh, and a massive contact. Yeah, huge collision there. That's and there's a player that is down that took a hard hit there, and that is going to be number five, Caden Grail. And he now is having some. Hey, there's pushing and shoving on the court. Yeah, he's having some words there with number two, Xavier Thomas. And there's a lot of jaw jacking going back and forth, and the, and the officials need to break this up. So it'll be Fox Chapel ball as 15, number 15 for Fox Chapel, Thomas Patterson just shoved Xavier Thomas. As yeah. Th Thomas was, was being exchanged, but Thomas never touched them, at which that is the thing, you can't touch them. No, no, you can't. And, and here's the thing. If you're just joining us, we're in overtime basketball. The lead has changed, I can't even think of how many times. The Foxes are up right now, 53 to 51. And this game has been very physical, very intense this entire time. And now there's been some pushing, some shoving. It's getting a little chippy out there. The officials have done a very good job of trying to control the game so far. Fox Chapel's coach pleading their case. And let's see what happens here when we go back to, to play. Looks like they're pulling the coaches aside here. No, the trainer going to come over to look at him. Okay. Make sure he's okay. Well, I mean, he he hit the ground pretty hard. And he he was did. down for a little. He did, and I think he hit his head, and he yes. should get checked out. Yes. You know? Most important thing is player safety. Absolutely. Absolutely. Regardless of what the score is the game in, you're absolutely right. So hopefully he gets, he gets taken a look at. I hope that it's not a head injury or anything like that. He was down there for a minute. So it'll be free throws for two free throws for Fox Chapel and a chance to make it a two possession game late. No good on the first. So only able to expand the lead to three, at which that was a huge miss and right. a massive break for Central. So still a one possession game for Central. But you gotta box out if it's a miss. Absolutely. 
in and out. Rebound Sullivan. And Huge again rebound. Sullivan clutched with a rebound. Kicks over. Fleming, corner three. Are oh. you kidding me? David wow. Fleming for three. Are you kidding me? Fox Chapel with the ball, 30 seconds left. Central Catholic up by one right now. Vikings putting Three on the pointer. pressure. No good, rebound Fox Chapel. They get it to go. And now Kwasinski gonna bring it up the floor, down by one. Fox Chapel taking the lead there. Timeout Time called by Central Catholic. Down good by time one, out 11 seconds. Down by one. 11.4 seconds left from Alumni Hall. I don't think that my heart can take any more, so we're gonna go to break. With Eaton Park Takeout, you can make any place the place for smiles. A picnic at the park, lunch on the go, or dinner in a movie. When you have Eaton Park Takeout, no matter where you go, smiles are sure to follow. At Hello Bistro, we build salads like you've never seen. With over 50 fresh toppings and 15 dressings, the only limit is your imagination. Build your own or order one of our salad masterpieces. Hello Bistro. Eat awesome. Ace, a skilled sharpshooter in their respective tradecraft. Do you have what it takes to be an ace? Located in Homestead, Pennsylvania, at the Bank on 8th, Ace Axe Throwing is the place where you and your friends can throw axes, drink, have fun, and compete to become an ace. Open Monday through Sunday. Book your tickets online today at www.aceaxthrowing.com. Welcome back to Alumni Hall. My name's Kyle. This is Ryan. 11.43 seconds left in overtime. Fox Chapel Fox is up by one. You pay for the whole seat, Ryan, but you only need the edge in this game, and it's crazy. Fade away, can't hit it, and they foul immediately. Four seconds to go with a foul, and they'll have two free throw opportunities. So Fox Chapel came in here, dominated the first half, grinded out their game. In the second half, we saw Central fight back into Central it. Central grind back, fight back, and it's just been lead change after lead change ever since. Both of these teams have played a tremendous game. And these two free throws are massive. The first one's no good. And you, would you think they would intentionally miss to waste time, almost, with four seconds, or do you think you still try to make it? I would think, if it was me, I would still try to make it. It is good. And now Central, timeout call. So timeout call, we're gonna keep it here because why not? So four seconds and, left. And you have to think, you need to put your shooters in the game. It's Absolutely. four seconds, you gotta get it. You're gonna inbound it from underneath your own basket. You're gonna need to get it across half court to have a decent opportunity at it where you almost think you don't have time to get it inside for the two-pointer. No, no, you you're, gonna, to, you're more than likely, unless, unless we see a Christian Leitner moment here, all right? Which we're probably not gonna see. Yes, I don't think they're gonna try to throw so, the Hail Mary pass. <laughs> so. It's probably gonna be at least two passes in order to get it down here. They're probably gonna to have to shoot the three in order to, to get the shot off in time. It is possible with four seconds left, and we do have clutch shooting here for the Vikings. There are players here that we have seen time and time again, this game and in other games for JV, step up and take the big shot. Yes, and for Fox Chapel, you have to think they you can't foul. What's, whatever no. you do, you cannot foul. Cannot, cannot. So if they get the three off, if you're Fox Chapel, Best you can do, two feet away, hand up, that's it. Yes. No movement inside, no close defense. And very, very exciting action with four seconds to go. Mason will be the one inbounding the ball for the Vikes. So not a full press here by the Foxes. They're gonna push them back, which is probably a good call. Gonna get into Sullivan. Sullivan's gonna take it up the court. He's gonna pull up, doesn't uh. get it to go. So unfortunately, Cole Sullivan could not get the bank shot off of that one. Valiant effort there by the JV team. I don't even know how many lead changes that we had. I mean, this was a very, very hard fought game by both teams. Now they're gonna shake hands, which they should do. Very physical game. There was some chippiness there at the end, but I don't think that that speaks to anybody's character on any team. It's just, it was just a high stress game. 
Yes, very exciting. And that's just a reminder, we have the varsity game coming up next. Right. We haven't even done the varsity game yet, Ryan. And I have already feel like I'm 60 years old at this point. All right. So, unfortunately, the Central Catholic Vikings junior varsity team did not come away with the win here tonight. The Fox Chapel Foxes came in. Hard fought game, back and forth, overtime basketball that we had. So for Ryan Meredith, I'm Kyle Templin, and everybody here that's been helping out, to the students, to the fans, we'll be back here shortly for the varsity game here, which I'm sure will be just as intense as the junior varsity game here. Thanks a lot for joining us, and we'll be back shortly. Workspace Solutions is true to their name. They are experts at helping customers find the perfect office furniture and workspace solutions. They can manage the entire process from design and planning to installation. As a leading independent dealer in the Pittsburgh region, Workspace Solutions' focus is to meet your needs with friendly and efficient service. You can visit them online at wsioffice.com. Welcome to Helltown. Helltown Brewing is a craft brewery focused on making quality beer. They use specialty grains for all of their beers and aren't sparing when it comes to hops. Helltown is brewed locally in export in Mount Pleasant, or as it was once referred to during the Whiskey Rebellion of 1794 as Helltown, and was later dubbed the zip code of 15666. Check them out at any of their four Pennsylvania tap rooms, located in Export, Houston, Mount Pleasant, and Pittsburgh Strip District. Helltownbrewing.com. Helltown Brewing reminds you to always drink responsibly. With Eaton Park Takeout, you can make any place the place for smiles. A picnic at the park, lunch on the go, or dinner in a movie. When you have Eaton Park Takeout, no matter where you go, smiles are sure to follow. At Hello Bistro, we build salads like you've never seen. With over 50 fresh toppings and 15 dressings, the only limit is your imagination. Build your own or order one of our salad masterpieces. Hello Bistro. Eat awesome. At Henny Jewelers, we know that jewelry is used for so many things, to celebrate moments and people in your lives and to express your personality. That's why we offer custom design services for those times you need something extra special or unique. Thanks to our highly skilled and experienced jewelers, we can create whatever your hearts desire. From updating family heirlooms to designing one-of-a-kind piece for any style and budget. Here's how it works. You contact us and tell us what you'd like to create, providing pictures and ideas, we develop a plan and begin designing the piece, tweaking and modifying until it's perfect. Then we create the piece. Our jewelers are truly some of the best in the industry, artists who work their magic to create a masterpiece just for you. From using your grandmother's diamond for your dream engagement ring, or to designing a ring to match one you saw on Pinterest, the possibilities are endless. Dream it, pin it, save it, envision it, and we'll create it. Custom design at Henny Jewelers. Get started today. Henny Jewelers, your jewelers for life.
Welcome to Alumni Hall. My name is Kyle Templin. Right next to me is Ryan Meredith. Emma and Joe are behind the scenes, plus JP and Tom are working the cameras for us tonight. Welcome to Central Catholic's Vikings varsity basketball. We had an amazing JV game earlier. I assume that this game here is going to be just as physical, just as intense. I This is the game of the year for Central. It's a revenge game. They lost to Fox Chapel at Fox Chapel earlier in the year. They want to fight back and win this one here at home. Yeah, lost 54 to 37 on the road at Fox Chapel. Like you said, Fox Chapel Foxes are coming in here hot. They are number one in the 6A division. They are 19 and one. One loss to North Hills. Nine and zero in the division. Central Catholic Vikings are 16 and four, eight and one overall, number three in 6A basketball. And we have got a packed house tonight here, Ryan. Shut, this is the largest crowd and best crowd I've seen in my time here at Central. There's people waiting out in the hallways. They, they don't have a seat, but they're still here waiting. Right now, Central Catholic getting their introductions in. And this game, I imagine, is going to be just as intense, if not more, than the JV game that we just saw. Unfortunately, the Central Catholic Viking JV team were defeated by the Fox Chapel Foxes in the last game. Overtime basketball we saw. I don't know if my heart can take overtime basketball in this game, Ryan. I'm getting old. I think that that game aged me another 10 years. Yes, very much so. Very stressful. Of course, Central couldn't end up with the win, but they could very much so. They have a really good chance of taking home a win today. So keys to the game, we were talking about it earlier. Fox Chapel Foxes, they've got a guy on their team that his name is Eli Yofan. He's averaging 20 points a game, which is phenomenal for high school basketball. He's also averaging almost six rebounds a game. And he's a, he's a free throw machine, so you don't want to put him on the line. The and key you, to the game is going to be to contain him. And of course, Central has their own man who's similar to him, Dante DePanti, just an absolute stud of a basketball player. Absolutely. They're going to ask for a lot of scoring on him, and I think we discussed it. Sheedway is definitely going to be a key to their success tonight. His presence overall in the game on defense is going to be massive because the Fox Chapel Foxes are actually not that large of a team. No, compared, Central has Langston Moses and the Babish Shibway who are just absolute units and big players on the basketball court. And Fox Chapel doesn't really have anyone to counter that. No, no. And that's why I think that you keep feeding the ball down low to these guys and let them post up. If they don't have the shot, kick it back out for the three-pointer. We know DePonte can sit there all night and post up threes. And Yofan already going to get an opportunity, but Peyton Wainer gets the steal. Peyton Wainer, a tremendous threat on this team. Also, the quarterback for the yes. varsity. And another steal for Fox Chapel. And makes and it. And this game's over. already back and forth. It's 2 0 Fox Chapel on top. Central Catholic Vikings on offense. But the defense so far has been amazing, which is what we saw in the JV game. And Yofan's going to inbound it. Definitely the all-star for their squad. The other guy on their team to look out for on defense is J.P. Dockey. That guy averages four steals a game. As Yofan just overthrows him out of bounds and a turnover already for the superstar. I have to think that that is a rare mental mistake on his part. I haven't seen him play before, but based on the stat sheet that I look at, he doesn't make many mistakes. Langston Moses, the big man for three, can't hit it. I'll tell you what, he can though, we've seen him do it before. Yes, he very much can make threes. Mid-range for Fox Chapel, can't get it to go. And Fox Chapel gonna get the offensive rebound. And that's where these two big men underneath need to grind it out and get those rebounds. That's gonna be the difference for the Central Catholic Vikings team tonight. If they want to avenge the loss to, to Fox Chapel. Coming in here, they need to protect the house. The defense chant coming from the fleet. That one's up, no good. Rebound goes to Shibwe. DePanti can't get it to go. 
And that one's gonna be out of bounds off of Fox Chapel. It'll be central possession. Six minutes left in the period. As Payne Wainer is gonna inbound it, the sophomore, the youngest starter on the floor. He has tremendous range on the football field for a quarterback, for somebody that young I've ever seen. So it doesn't surprise me that he's just as good at basketball. And they're gonna call the violation. Didn't get it inside, get it inbound quick enough. And it'll be, and it'll be Fox Chapel ball. So turnover there by the Vikings. Press on. Yo fan in transition. He gets that to go. And there's and his great, first basket. Great there. defense there by Sheedway. He did everything he could to stop that. Yo fan was just too good in that moment. Stepanti driving, pull up. Can't hit it. Rebound Langston Moses though. Huge rebound He's by Moses. And, and they're gonna be a travel, call travel. travel. Wow. Wow. Couldn't see it from all the way over here. I'll have to take the official's word for it. He was right there. Very raucous crowd here tonight. He's going to try. Drive it in. Going to kick it out. Three-pointer. No good. Rebound to Panty. Excellent rebound by DePanty there. Langston Moses going to give it over to Randy Wilkerson. Wilkerson over to Shebley. Back out to the Panty. Driving. No foul called. The Panty looking for the foul, didn't get it. In transition, the easy lay-in. And it's six to nothing, Fox and Chapel. And this is what Fox Chapel does, run and gun. They are a quick team, they are fast. And it's gonna be hard for the Vikings to transition that quick. They're used to putting the press in the backcourt area. And so far, Fox Chapel has an answer for that. A Hail Mary pass down to the end. We have three minutes into this game. Central is yet to get a basket. Which is rare, I'll have to admit. It is very rare for the Vikings to Fade go away, that one's gonna be basket. blocked, but tipped in the hand of Langston Moses. Sheedway and Moses working together for that one. And DePanty nails the three. It's De Dante DePanty just drills the three-pointer. Gonna cut the lead in half. The Vikings cut the lead in half. It's six to three, Fox Chapel on top. Just over four minutes left in the period. Very fast, very fast Fox Chapel team here. As that, from the looks of it from over here, it's a foul, but I definitely sold it on the, a little bit for Yofan. And they're gonna call that a shooting foul. Very. They are gonna call that a shooting and foul. I think, and I think that's what Coach Urso is upset about. He is upset about it. And we don't normally see Coach Urso get upset. He is like the Buddha of, of high school basketball coaches. So I'm surprised that he's animated this early in the game. But Yofan does what he does. And I'll tell you what, the guy has been money from the line. But he misses that one. Maybe this could be the key right here. Maybe making this guy earn it at the line tonight is what they need to do. A second free throw. Sheedway and Moses. It's no Fox good either. Out. Huge rebound by Sheedway, gets it over to DePanty. Four minutes left in the period. Over to Payne Wainer. Wainer kicks over to Settles. Settles back over Langston Moses. They're gonna call it charge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you on that one. I actually think that that was a setup play that they knew that Moses was gonna go in that direction. And He's, I don't want to say it, but I think that he animated that to make yeah. to make the call. He's such a big body. If he even a little tap on you, it looks like it's a yeah, big Yeah, it looked like he barely touched him. So We're Fox Chapel now with the ball on offense again. Good defense there by Shibley on top of him. He's now driving inside. And to kick it down low. And, That's good. And this is... This is and the, where and they're, gonna call, and they're gonna call the foul, but the interesting thing is the ref who called the foul was on the other side of the court and not the man down low. So this is where it gets interesting, right? Because these are very quick passes by Fox Chapel. Their whole game is, is to get somebody on the inside. The offense clearly, clearly runs through one person. 
But the idea is, is that they get quick shots in a hurry, and so far it's paying off for them. And Jaden Bailey checks into the game for the first time. And three fouls already for Central Catholic, and that is not what they're used to with three minutes and 30 seconds left in the first period. Payne and Wayne are going to bring it up the floor. Down by six. Wayner leaning shot, Excellent drills shot. it. Excellent shot by Wayner. Four point lead now for Fox Chapel and they're running and gunning again. Yes, trying to pick up the pace, make try to outrun Central. It's gonna be stuffed by Chayden Bailey. Gonna bring it down the floor. He's gonna be fouled and he'll go to the line for two free throws. Chayden Bailey, terrific sequence of play. Excellent hustle by Bailey, got the block, picked it up, took it down to the end of the court, and he earned himself two shots. And Yofan not going to take a long break whatsoever, and he's even going to check back in. No, I would. He, he plays a lot of minutes for the Central, for, um, for Fox Chapel, and he's clearly the, the lynch, like the linchpin to their offense. All the offense runs through him. Three minutes left. The free throw, no good. Rebound central though, out to Settles. Three-pointer is no good. Swatted away. Vernon Settles just swats that one out of nowhere. I'll tell you what, he got so high on that swat, I swear he could have dunked the basketball. Tremendous, tremendous vertical to, to block that shot. Just a massive athletic play. Mid-range, wide open, miss, just miscommunication there by Patrick Mule. Yeah, and that was put in by number 31, Russell Fenton. As DePanty gonna bring it up the floor. Central Catholic Vikings down by five. Bailey driving, gets Excellent spin move. Excellent spin move there by Bailey. Jaden Bailey just had him moving all over the place, and it's gonna be a travel. And this is where we've seen that momentum start to shift. Yes, and this is the opportunity where Central has to take over and capitalize on these opportunities. Wayner gonna inbound it to Settles. Settles looking to set something off. Yofan guarding him. Settles at the point, setting up the play. Yofan gonna kick it over to Wayner. And now Patrick Newell gonna kick it over to the Panty. Back over to Settles. Settles, wide open, three-pointer, can't drill it. Yeah, unfortunately, that was that was a shot where they could have definitely switched the momentum of the game there, but still have a chance here. Open three-pointer for Fox Chapel. He makes wow. it. You definitely cannot leave that guy open. Is DePanty going to bring it down the floor? That was number 12, Jake DeMott. And he made that look too easy. Settles. Kicks over. Fox to the Shepel panty. down by six, or I'm sorry, up by six now. Oh, has them dancing with it. Dante the panty. He mills it. Wow. The spin move to the lay in. Terrific. And a timeout for Fox Chapel. I'll tell you what, that was probably a good timeout because, again, we see, we saw that, you know, in that time, Central Catholic Vikings were gaining momentum. And even though Fox Chapel is ahead right now, that's the last thing that they want to happen. They don't want to lose their momentum. They're Absolutely. trying just to keep it on their side, but Central just trying to take it away. But DePanty, very, very athletic play right there to spin around. Yeah, that was a tremendously athletic play there. I mean, not only did he spin around, it looked like he might have been off balance there for a second, but he was still able to get the shot off and drain it. I mean, we've seen that. We saw an excellent spin move down there. It is going to take all of that and more to defeat the number one team walking in here from 6A. Yes, it's going to take absolutely everything that Central has. Settle's going to guard the man on the inbound. Full press by the Vikings. Now, Fox Chapel going to get it down inside, going to have an open shot and going to make it. It seems like every shot, 
Fox Chapel has taken has been just an open shot. Well, they're very good at finding the open man, and they're very good at countering whatever pressure and defense that the Vikings throw at them. He's now Newell going to swing it over to Settles. Over to Wayner. Over to P to Panty. The Panty driving. DePanty fouled. Can't get it to go. And he'll go to the line for two free throws. And that was hard, hard driving there by DePanty. And he knew that going in. And T took his two steps, got fouled, and had a shot attempt, but he'll have two free throws. Absolutely. One minute left in the first period. Fox Chapel up by six. DePanty looking to cut into that lead. Misses the free throw. Mm. Mm. See Moses check into the game. Nails it. Lead cut to five. As he has six points on the day now. Yofan guarded by Settles. Settles is not Yofan though. Settles guarding him. Tight no, Yofan out here off to, the, off to the wing. Central, he's only had two points today. Definitely done a great job shutting him down so far. Yeah, and that's going to be the key. Make everybody else shoot. Yeah, they're going to have to get in his face. You might be big, but you're not as big as Langston Moses. Absolutely. <laughs> they're going to call a foul on Settles. And, and that was a foul, but I'll tell you what, that was an excellent play there by Settles. He got over there in a hurry to block off that shot, make him earn it at the line. So we'll get two free throws. 16 to 11, 27 seconds left. Fox Chapel in the lead. 17 to 11 now. Three throws good. Makes both from the line. Now DePanty gonna bring it up the floor. We know how electrifying he is. We got 19 seconds remaining here in this first quarter. Looks like they're going to hold for last shot. Yeah, no, absolutely. he's going to pull up. But they're going to call the foul on him. He'll go to shoot the three free throws from the line. And Fox Chapel may not agree with it, but that was the call. So DePanty earning it at the line with the majority of the scoring so far for the Vikings. As he misses the first free throw. And this is unlike DePanty to miss this many free throws. Absolutely, I was just going to say that. It's, it's, we haven't seen him like this at the free throw line in a while. Makes it. It's now up to seven points on the day. One more shot for DePanty. 9.4 seconds left in the period. The shot's and he good. cuts the lead to five. He makes two, two of the three. It's going to be a foul called on Jaden Bailey. On and you know what? That was a little bit of lazy defense there by Jaden Bailey. I hate to call him out on that, but it was, and he gets called for it. Uncharacteristic also, Ryan. Five fouls. Yes, definitely. Central's usually not fouling a ton. No. Full press by the Vikings. Down low, wide wow. open in the paint. Wow. And that will end the quarter. Somebody missed an assignment on that one. Fox Chapel Foxes up 20 to 13 on your Central Catholic Vikings. We will be right back after these messages. Workspace Solutions is true to their name. They are experts at helping customers find the perfect office furniture and workspace solutions. They can manage the entire process from design and planning to installation. As a leading independent dealer in the Pittsburgh region, Workspace Solutions' focus is to meet your needs with friendly and efficient service. You can visit them online at wsioffice.com. Ace, a skilled sharpshooter in their respective tradecraft. Do you have what it takes to be an ace?
Located in Homestead, Pennsylvania at the Bank on 8th, Ace Axe Throwing is the place where you and your friends can throw axes, drink, have fun, and compete to become an ace. Open Monday through Sunday. Book your tickets online today at www.aceaxthrowing.com. Discover who the ace really is. Welcome back to Alumni Hall. My name is Kyle Templin. Next to me is Ryan Meredith, and we are in the second period of play, and it's an overthrow and pass with the Fox Chapel Foxes coming in here and taking a 20 to 13 lead over the Central Catholic Vikings. Tommy Christian going to bring the ball up over to Wilkerson. Wilkerson. Tommy Christian is also a guy that can go on a on a tear. Yes, one of the best hustlers you'll ever see on the Absolutely. basketball court. Three-pointer, Moses can't hit it. Rebound, Sheedway. Excellent rebound by Sheedway. Can't hit it the second attempt, but ends up into to Panty's hands. Then Fox Chapel finally going to get it, and they're going to push it up the floor. As Tommy Christian nuts the ball out of his hand to stop the easy basket, and we mentioned it earlier, his hustle is unmatched to anybody else in Western Pennsylvania. It's like you see three of them on the court. He's so good. He's everywhere. Shibwe on Yofan. Driving in. That one's good. Wow. And Shibwe had excellent defense on that too. Again, Yofan was just a little bit better on that drive. DePanty going to bring it up the floor. 22-13. Fox Chapel up. Going to be taken away. Can't hit the free throw. They're going to be at their own rebound though, but it's a late whistle. Yeah, and it's going to be... It's going to be a foul. He pushed him in the back on the rebound. And now, now Fox Chapel is one away from the bonus. So Fox Chapel up by nine. It's now trying to find something. Langston Moses, you can't get past him. No. Three pointer. Good. Wow. That was number 12, Jake DeMott again. Cannot leave that guy open. It's now DePanty, kicks over to Wilkerson. I think he needs, Wilkerson mid-range, can't hit it. As they're gonna call it over to back on Shibwe. I, I don't know about that one. Right? I don't know about that one either, Ryan, but that was the call on the court. I, uh, looks like we're gonna have a timeout. No, just substitutions. So Sheedway having a frustrating game so far. And now I they're mean, in the bonus, so it'll be a one and one. Sheedway playing excellent defense on Yofan, but Yofan just getting the better of him, it seems like, each time. In a little bit of foul trouble right now, Sheedway. You know, two big guys. The first free throw and, and unfortunately, they're just getting a lot of fouls called on them right now. That's what happens when you play intense defense. Sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. The second free throw is also good. So that is going to stretch the lead now to 14. 14, 27, 13, just over six minutes left in the half. Central Catholic needs to get, needs to get somebody on fire here. Wayner going to kick over. Down low. Langston Moses nails it. Down low to the big man. That gets him two. It's Langston's first basket of the day. Gonna have a wide open man down low. It's, it's going to be a charge call, and it's going the other way. And That's I'll tell a you what, that was job by excellent Randy Wilkerson. There. Absolutely. Excellent job there by Wilkerson because that was going to be an easy basket. Once again, it seems like the press, they cannot transition in time. And Fox Chapel's answer to that is to always have somebody down here at the end of the court. Now, Bailey. Gonna kick it down to Moses. Who's gonna get the lay in? And that's that's the pass, that's the that's the pass you take all day to the big man down low. Wow. Wow. Listen. Cameron Grable just had an amazing move there to the basket. But the panty driving, can't get to go. 
and Yofan turning on the Jets. And a foul called. And that's going to be against Moses. Twenty-nine to seventeen. Fox Chapel Foxes come in here and they got the lead. Five, but just over five minutes left in the half. Yofan at the line. He has four points today, but he missed his two free throws earlier. As he makes that one, he's one for three from the line today. The second free throw, no good, rebound Wainer. Wainer's gonna bring up the floor, kick over Bailey. Jaden Bailey. Wainer gonna lose possession of the ball. It's gonna be a double dribble. So Wainer not happy with that call, but uh, you know, the officials were right there whenever they saw it. And again, we're starting to see some mental mistakes here from the Central Catholic Vikings. And it's, honestly, it's, it's because they're in a position that they haven't been in a lot this season, where they're down. Yofan driving, he's gonna be fouled. And he'll go to the line for two more free throws. I, I, I don't know how Yofan can continue to drive the basket that hard and get fouled and continue to be able to have that pace through an entire game. This but is the free throw. The stats say that he does. So, and uncharacteristically, he's having a bad day at the line. So it's not a bad move to foul the guy. No, not at all. And they've been keeping him away from the perimeter. So he hasn't had any three point shooting either, which he's normally very good at. He makes the second, misses the first. Mr. Panty gonna bring it up the floor. So this is where Coach Urso is trying to uh, get the, uh, uh oh. Is there gonna kick someone out of the They game? are. They are. He, I'm sure that he said something that you cannot say. So. And his central crowd erupts in his honor. And he's not going to fight. He's just going to walk out. No, he knows what he said. And I'm sure that it was not good. Because that was a very, very quick ejection. <laughs> so. Officials will only put up with so much. And some of them can put up with some things. But there's some things that you just do not say to an official. Moses over to Wilkerson. Wilkerson driving in. Settles three-pointer. Drains Bang. it. Wow. Vernon drills to three. Four minutes left in the game. Fox is up 31 to 20. Vikings trying to get back into the ball game here. Driving, he's gonna get fouled. And that's another one on, was that on Moses? I think it was on Moses. And he's gonna be in trouble. That's his third of the game. And they're gonna bring Patrick Newell back in. Yeah. They have to. Free throws good. 10 fouls in this first half for Central. Yeah, very uncharacteristic of the Vikings to have that many fouls. I would assume that going into the halftime, Urso is going to try to tell them to settle down, play the game that they came here to play, grind it out. No good on the second, and Central's going to come up with the ball. DePanty, three-pointer, drills wow. it. and he made something out of nothing there. He has 11 on the day. And Central Catholic now, the Vikings grinding back. As you cut it back within 10. With 3.35 remaining in the first half. Forcing Fox Chapel. It's going to be a travel call. So DePanty gonna bring up the ball here. 
to Panty. Going to kick out, settles over to Wainer. Wainer kicks over to Panty, deep three ball, can't hit it. Yofan going to bring it up the floor. He's going to look to He's push gonna the He's going to go tackle. right for the, yep. And something like right out of the move of Michael Jordan running into the basket there. I mean, it's amazing. He can really turn on the Jets when he has to. Excellent pass there by DePanty. He makes the free throw in transition. Timeout, Coach Urso uses it. Timeout called by the Central Catholic Vikings. Fox Chapel Foxes are taking the lead right now, 36 to 23, and we will be right back here from Alumni Hall after these messages. In a rush? Make Applebee's to go your go-to. Just order online or download the app today and pick it up curbside when you text, I've arrived. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood at participating locations. Welcome to Helltown. Helltown Brewing is a craft brewery focused on making quality beer. They use specialty grains for all of their beers and aren't sparing when it comes to hops. Helltown is brewed locally and export in Mount Pleasant, or as it was once referred to during the Whiskey Rebellion of 1794 as Helltown, and was later dubbed the zip code of 15666. Check them out at any of their four Pennsylvania tap rooms, located in Export, Houston, Mount Pleasant, and Pittsburgh Strip District. Helltownbrewing.com. Helltown Brewing reminds you to always drink responsibly. Do you have a Rolex, Tudor, Omega, or other Swiss-made watch? To keep your watch in tip-top shape, Trust Henny Jewelers for your watch repair needs. Our master watchmaker, Chris Travelstead, has decades of experience. He works his magic every week in our state-of-the-art watch repair center, right on site at our Shadyside location. From replacing batteries to water testing and other watch repairs, including full overhauls, you can count on Henny Jewelers. Welcome back to Alumni Hall. My name is Kyle Templin. Next to me is Ryan Meredith. Welcome to Central Catholic Vikings basketball as they are currently down 36 to 23 with two minutes and 30 seconds left in the game, er, in the half. He's gonna be fouled. And now, and that will be the sixth foul of the day and one away from the bonus for Central. Yeah, it's, it's uncharacteristic for Central Catholic to be 10 fouls in in this half. I mean, it's, it, I've never seen that call in these games, but Wilkerson, three-pointer, doesn't hit it, but he'll go to the line for three free throws after being fouled. I think that's the first time I've ever seen two shooting three-pointer fouls in a game also. Randy Wilkerson can't make the first. Wow. It, the one thing I can say is, is that we haven't been that great at the line, but neither has Fox Chapel. Yeah. And 17 total fouls. The refs definitely not letting them play out. Some no. Of, some of these calls have been questionable. I think they're just calling everything. Yeah, I think that you're right about that. And they're definitely putting the crowd on notice too by an early ejection by one of the uh, by one of the fans. Which is probably Second for the best. Good. We uh, you don't want a game like this to get out of hand. With emotions high, I definitely agree with you. Just over two minutes left in the half. That ball is tipped. It's going to be out of bounds off of Vernon Settles. Wayner trying for the hustle over there, but uh, it's a little bit too much even for him to handle. It's now Yofan at the top. You know, I think he's calling for his play. It's going to be and a give and go. Oh, wow. This is going to air ball it. And that was that was tremendous defense by Sheedway there to cut that off. Because that was a for sure lay. Oh, and what look a at play. Look at that. 13 on the day. For I the mean, he made, it, he made that look easy like a pro. And cuts the lead to nine. Just over a minute 30 left in the game. Or, I'm sorry, in the half. 36 to 27. Fox Chapel up. Great defense there. And I can't believe that they're going to call the foul on that. I can't either. That because is I had a great view of that, and I know you did too, Ryan. And that looked all ball to me. 
all ball. And, and I don't normally, normally I give the officials credit where credit is due, but that, that looked like a bad call to me. Like we said earlier, they're calling everything. Everything, you are right about that. She makes the first. Free throws, good. The panty gonna bring up the floor. Minute 20 left in the half. Wilkerson gonna swing over, settles, three pointer, bang! And that was a beautiful three pointer there to cut the lead to eight. But Fox Chapel back on offense very quickly. They're very good in that transition. That one's good. Very good in the transition. And cuts it to 40, to 30, 10 point lead. Out to Settles. And they're gonna call it charge, wow. wow. It did not look like he had his feet set whatsoever. No, it did not. And DePanty is very upset. And so is Coach Urso. Very uncharacteristic of Coach Urso. And he has given the official an earful. And wow. Right, and rightfully so. Very he, questionable. I've never seen him this animated. And I would assume if you're Fox Chapel right now, you're just going to run out the clock. Yes, I do agree. Try to hold for last shot. No shot clock, so you don't have to worry about that in high school basketball. Sixteen, 15 seconds. Corner three. That one's good. And again, number 12, Jake DeMont. It's going to be a foul call on Fox Chapel. So four seconds left. It looks like DePanty's going to go to the line there. Down by 13, going into the half. If you're a coach or so, what do you think you tell the team? I think you got to tell them. We just got to pick up the pace. It makes the free throw. Big clutch free throw there. And that could be a change. You know, sometimes whenever you make one finally at the line, you start to go on a streak there. So hopefully we see that with DePanty because very uncharacteristically, like we said, he has not been making his free throws. Yes. There. He's usually making almost all of them. As the second free throw is good too. There you go. Four seconds left. Fox Chapel gonna press. Gonna look for Yofan and gonna hit him. Two, one. He's gonna shoot it. He's not gonna make it. Good effort there for a three by Yofan, but it does not go in. So Fox Chapel Foxes come in here and take a lead 43 to 32 over the Central Catholic Vikings. We're at the half. We'll be right back at third period after these messages. Workspace Solutions is true to their name. They are experts at helping customers find the perfect office furniture and workspace solutions. They can manage the entire process from design and planning to installation. As a leading independent dealer in the Pittsburgh region, Workspace Solutions focus is to meet your needs with friendly and efficient service. You can visit them online at WSIOffice.com. 
www.centralcatholicsupports.com. At Central Catholic, being connected takes on a deeper meaning. Since 1927, these hallowed hallways have been responsible for connecting young men and forging everlasting values. At Central Catholic, being connected means being part of a brotherhood. Men who may come from different backgrounds and have different interests, but men who share a fundamental connection, the Central Catholic Connection. In a rush? Make Applebee's to go your go-to. Just order online or download the app today and pick it up curbside when you text, I've arrived. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood at participating locations. Ace, a skilled sharpshooter in their respective tradecraft. Do you have what it takes to be an ace? Located in Homestead, Pennsylvania at the Bank on 8th, Ace Axe Throwing is the place where you and your friends can throw axes, drink, have fun, and compete to become an ace. Open Monday through Sunday. Book your tickets online today at www.aceaxthrowing.com. Discover who the ace really is. Welcome to Helltown. Helltown Brewing is a craft brewery focused on making quality beer. They use specialty grains for all of their beers and aren't sparing when it comes to hops. Helltown is brewed locally in Export and Mount Pleasant, or as it was once referred to during the Whiskey Rebellion of 1794 as Helltown, and was later dubbed the zip code of 15666. Check them out at any of their four Pennsylvania tap rooms, located in Export, Houston, Mount Pleasant, and Pittsburgh Strip District. Helltownbrewing.com. Helltown Brewing reminds you to always drink responsibly. At Henny Jewelers, we know that jewelry is used for so many things, to celebrate moments and people in your lives and to express your personality. That's why we offer custom design services for those times you need something extra special or unique. Thanks to our highly skilled and experienced jewelers, we can create whatever your hearts desire. From updating family heirlooms to designing one of a kind piece for any style and budget. Here's how it works. You contact us and tell us what you'd like to create, providing pictures and ideas, we develop a plan and begin designing the piece, tweaking and modifying until it's perfect. Then we create the piece. Our jewelers are truly some of the best in the industry, artists who work their magic to create a masterpiece just for you. From using your grandmother's diamond for your dream engagement ring, or to designing a ring to match one you saw on Pinterest, the possibilities are endless. Dream it, pin it, save it, envision it, and we'll create it. Custom design at Henny Jewelers. Get started today. Henny Jewelers, your jewelers for life.
Welcome back to Alumni Hall. My name is Kyle Temple, and next to me is Ryan Meredith. We are here for the Central Catholic Vikings varsity basketball game. They are taking on the Fox Chapel Foxes tonight, who are leading right now 43 to 32 going into the second half. What can I say? The Fox Chapel Foxes have an answer for everything that the Vikings thrown at them so far. Yes, the press, they beat it. This is the best I've seen any team beat Central's press. It's just been phenomenal. They've been able to hit it down. They've been able to beat it. It's almost like they have a guy, I don't want to say cherry picking because he's playing defense as well, but he's just down there wide open for them to make the Hail Mary pass. I mean, it's working, and and the, the lead shows it. Now, Coach Urso came out a lot more calm than we saw him in the first half, which is, you know, as animated as, as he was in the first half. That's very uncharacteristic of Coach Urso. Came out a lot more calm. The team seemed to come out calmer. I think for Central Catholic for this game is, is they just got to keep grinding away at that lead, but they have to have confidence to make the big shots whenever they're open. It's only 11, so they're still very much in this game. Wilkerson, three-pointer. And drains it. And that's a great start for the Vikings. He's a sharpshooter and makes them pay right there. What's now? The Panty, Gordon. Going to kick out three-pointer. Fox Chapel can't hit it. Moses with the rebound. Wainer over to DePanty. DePanty driving. Can't get to go, but rebound. DeBaba Shibwe gets it to go. Shibwe, and again, he needs to bang down there all game in order to keep getting those offensive rebounds and, and keeping the team in it. And it's a quick five points for Central to start out this second half. And number 12 is dangerous. We've seen him drain some pretty clutch shots tonight. Jake DeMott for Fox Chapel. He seems like he's always the guy that gets open for the three-pointer. And there he is, hanging out in the corner. Driving in, layup, no good, rebound, Shibwe. He's complaining for the foul, but he's not gonna get it. But he's gonna get the steal. That one is good. Yofan nails it. He's, Yofan's into double digits. And that's, that's a thing right there where Shibwe needs to not worry about the guy complaining in front of him. And he just took his head off the ball. And unfortunately, uh, but Central has their the, own superstar in Dante DePanti to nail that one. He's a man possessed coming out of the half. Gonna kick it over. Driving inside. That one's gonna be taken away by Shibwe. Gonna hand it off to DePanti. Excellent Panty. defense again by Shibwe. Wainer, three-pointer. Can't get it to oh. go. Rebound, Shibwe. As he just throws it away, basically. Full court heave, he hits the full court pass. That is, uh-oh. And he's down, he's hurt. This is, Yofan is holding his leg. This does yeah, not look Yeah, it looked good. like he might have pulled a calf the way that he went down there. And training staff coming in. Yeah. And with the timeout. And you hate to see that uh, for a player of his caliber to get hurt like that. And it, and it was a very routine you know, drive to the basket there. He made the basket as well. Yeah, and he just kind of came down, and he didn't come down awkwardly or anything. He just kind of came down, and when he planted that foot coming down, it looked like he might have pulled a hamstring, maybe a calf, because he immediately grabbed it and went to the floor. It looks like his right leg. Yeah, that was the, that was the leg he planted whenever he came down, so. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's okay. Why don't we go ahead and go to the break. Uh, we'll be right back with Central Catholic Vikings basketball right after this. Does your ring need to be resized? Do you have a chain that's broken? Are you concerned about bent or weak areas on a bracelet? At Henny Jewelers, we're proud to offer extensive jewelry repair services right on site, thanks to our three jewelers. These jewelers have over 80 years of combined experience as craftsmen. Our process is simple. Contact us via our website or stop in the store to tell us about your jewelry repair needs. We'll evaluate and assess what needs to be done, inspecting the items as necessary. Then we'll provide you with an estimate and time frame for completion. Once you approve, our highly skilled and experienced jewelers will complete the repairs 
and get your jewelry back to you looking brand new again. Jewelry Repair with Henny Jewelers. Always top customer service and a name you can trust since 1887. Contact Henny today to get started. Henny Jewelers, your jewelers for life. With Eaton Park Takeout, you can make any place the place for smiles. A picnic at the park, lunch on the go, or dinner in a movie. When you have Eaton Park Takeout, no matter where you go, smiles are sure to follow. At Hello Bistro, we build salads like you've never seen. With over 50 fresh toppings and 15 dressings, the only limit is your imagination. Build your own or order one of our salad masterpieces. Hello Bistro. Eat awesome. Welcome back to Alumni Hall. My name is Kyle Temple, and next to me is Ryan Meredith. And just so that you're uh, aware, we did have an injury uh, that happened to uh, Fox Chapel, and that was uh, you know, the linchpin of their offense, Eli Yofan. He did get up and walk off the court on his own. He was limping, though. That's a tough blow for the Foxes, yes. honestly, because their, their offense does, does pretty much flow through them. Um, he was over there, you know, the trainer, it looks like he's done with him. He was over there chewing ice. I don't know if it was a cramp. I don't know if he pulled something, but he's not in the game right now, but he did walk off all on his own. So that's a great sign for him walking off. Absolutely, his own. absolutely. Swings it over. DePanty driving in. DePanty can't hit it. And it was a great move by DePanty, and he definitely wanted a foul call on that, but he is not going to get it. Five minutes, 20 seconds left. Fox Chapel Fox is up 47 to 39. Trying to find something for Fox Chapel. Driving in. Ooh, no good. No good. Clean block. Rebound Sheba. Down low, Langston Moses gets the basket to go. And when Moses is down there in the paint like that, no one can stop him from this Fox Chapel team. Throw He's across too big. Court, make another pass. Defense, 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 defense. Down low, pass too far. It's going to be going to the Vikings. Turnover it, by the Foxes. And is this the run the Vikings needed? This is what they need. Down by six, getting Sheedway and Moses down there in the paint, banging it out. Wainer driving, Wainer's down. He is down, he took a hard fall there, but he is back. And that's gonna be a foul. That is gonna be a foul. And I think that's gonna be on DePanty. Yes, he will be on DePanty. Which is, they're definitely letting him play more in the second half, I'm gonna say that much. Yeah, and right now, you know, if you're the Foxes, your offense is basically running through number 12, which is DeMott, and that's not a bad position for them. He's been excellent during this game. He's not as tall or as menacing, you know, as Yofan, but, and but the great, guy can ball. And a great sign right now, Yofan coming back into the game. It is, and it's good to see that. It really is, because you know what? You hate to see a player of that caliber go down, and if you're the Vikings, you want him to come back because if you're going to win, you want to beat you want to beat him with the guy in. Does that make the free throw? Cuts the lead to seven. Just over four minutes left. Adam jumping on the pump fake, but he gets it to over to the Shibwe. And he'll be fouled. And that is going to be a foul. And I couldn't see who that was on. It was either on number 12 or number 10. It's going to inbound it to DePanty. DePanty gets the screen from Shibai. Going to get him over to Shibai. Going to kick over to Wainer. Wainer driving. Wainer's going to be fouled. That's going to be on the floor. Yeah, and that was a that was a good hip check there, foul by uh, by Fox Chapel. If he wouldn't have done that, Wainer would have had a clear lane to the basket. So Wayner gonna come out. No, nope, he's staying in. Never mind. 
He was just hanging out over near the yeah. bench. Shibuya over to the pants. He's going to oh. be taken away. And that was a telegraph, <laughs> telegraph pass there. Going to bring the lead and to the nine. And the fans for Fox Chapel wanted a foul on that and an and one, but they're not going to get it. Going to go down low to Shiba. Going to give it back to Moses. He's going to get in and make it. As Central's going to call the timeout. So Central's going to call the timeout with them scoring, cutting the lead to seven. Fox Chapel Fox is up 50 to 43 on the Central Catholic Vikings, and we will be right back. Welcome back to Central Catholic Vikings basketball here at Alumni Hall. Central Catholic Vikings down right now, 43 to 50 as Fox Chapel. It's gonna be a foul called on Wayner. Fox Chapel, Fox Chapel with the offense right now. Looks like they're gonna take it out of bounds. And uh, just when I thought I was gonna say that there are less fall, fouls being called this half, uh, it looks like we're starting to build back up again. Now, gonna swing it over. Gets up, trying to find an offense here for Fox Chapel. Everything the Vikings have done, they've just countered. Gonna kick it to Yofan. And he is gonna drive hard to the basket. He's not gonna get it, but he's gonna get his own rebound and tip it in. Yeah, he. He definitely hustled on that play for those two points. High pass to Settles, but Settles does corral it as he deep pass to Jaden Bailey across court. Three Depanty, pointer, long three. Air ball. And they are gonna transition down and that is gonna be an easy layup for them. 54 to 43, two minutes and 30 seconds left in the period. And again, the Vikings putting the press down and the answer to that is Fox Chapel just sends a man down in transition. Go swing it over. Wayner. Over Bailey. Jaden Bailey driving in. Gonna kick it out to Wayner. Wayner for three. He drills it. Peyton Wayner for three. Beautiful shot by Peyton Wayner there. Beautiful shot by Peyton Wayner. Two minutes left in the period. Cuts the lead to eight. And they're going to get called for a violation. LB Central ball. So that time was effective for the press. And it won't, you and me were talking at halftime wondering if they were going to continue to press, and they do, and that's why they do it. It's working out right now. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right about that, Ryan. We were talking about it, and yeah, that was, that was a time where it definitely paid off for the Vikings, but they're really slow to transition, and Fox Chapel just seems to beat them in that transition a lot of times. They're gonna call a foul on Settles. Well, that is interesting. Okay. Well, ball back to the Foxes. So we've just changed possession here a couple of times. That's and Settles the, third. The crowd is getting very animated by all these fouls. Press on. Drop. Fox Chapel gonna drive up the floor. Excellent defense there. By Wilkerson. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that was some Gary Payton glove kind of stuff right there. But unfortunately, he gets called for the reach on that one. That'll be the fourth foul essential today. That's Wilkerson's second. Gonna bring it up the floor. Less than a minute 30 left in the, in the period. Just throws that ball away, it'll be central ball. Well, it looked like, and this may be something to where we know that Yofan uh, Yo is hurt. 
and it looked like he was supposed to break inside to the basket on that, and he could not get that burst of speed that we normally saw him in the first half. So he may still be playing hurt. Gonna stay in possession of the Vikes. Gonna be tipped out of bounds by Fox Chapel. Minute 11 left in the period. The Vikings down by eight. Woo! Very close. It's Wilkerson. Very close there. Saving the ball. Yeah. There's the panty, kicks it over to Wilkerson, driving in. He gets it to go. Excellent, excellent finger roll there by Wilkerson. Cutting the lead to six. Driving, ball tipped into the hands of Fox Chapel. He's going to be fouled. And you know what? And that is a hard foul to take if you are Central Catholic. But it is a foul nonetheless. The and ball was going around back and forth there in there. And he just happened to be the guy that caught the ball and ran into a guy that wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> Sometimes the breaks just don't go your way whenever the ball is bouncing around like that. And that is going to be number 31 at the line, Russell Fenton, for the Foxes. That one. Rebound Fox Chapel, but Wayner going to take possession. And he's going to say it's off of Fox Chapel, off of Central, and it'll be Fox Chapel. It is. It was off Wayner there. But excellent hustle by Wayner to get after that ball. It's 40 seconds to go. And we don't see, like I said, we don't see Yofan moving around the court as much as we saw him in the first half. So I do believe that he, that, that leg is still bothering him. They get to Yofan here. Yofan, look, I think they might be home for last shot. Oh, absolutely. They're driving in now. That's up, no good. Re Moses can't corral it as it's going to be out of bounds and going to go as he calls it going Central's way. So the officials are talking. And we'll go Central's way. And they're going to say it goes Central's way. Good job there by the officials to get together, make sure they were both on the same page. One official had a better view than the other one. That one's good as Dante the Panty drills it as time expires in the third quarter. Excellent. To cut the lead to five. Excellent drive there by DePanty. He worked for every second of that drive and cuts the lead to five. 55 to 50. Fox Chapel is up. We'll be going into the fourth period right after this. Ace, a skilled sharpshooter in their respective tradecraft. Do you have what it takes to be an ace? Located in Homestead, Pennsylvania at the Bank on 8th, Ace Axe Throwing is the place where you and your friends can throw axes, drink, have fun, and compete to become an ace. Open Monday through Sunday. Book your tickets online today at www.aceaxthrowing.com. Discover who the ace really is. Workspace Solutions is true to their name. They are experts at helping customers find the perfect office furniture and workspace solutions. They can manage the entire process from design and planning to installation. As a leading independent dealer in the Pittsburgh region, Workspace Solutions' focus is to meet your needs with friendly and efficient service. You can visit them online at wsioffice.com. Welcome back to Alumni Hall. My name is Kyle Templin. That's Ryan Meredith. We are ready to start the fourth period here with the Fox Chapel Foxes up 55 to 50 on the Vikings, but it has really been a tale of two halves so far, Ryan. Yes, most definitely. Central right now came out hot and cut the lead to five in the third quarter. Going, can't hit it. Rebound, Shibla. And the crowds right now, both sides of the gym are just on the edge of every shot. 
over to Wainer. Wainer, three-pointer. Can't hit it. Rebound, Shibwe tips it to Bailey. As, as Bailey, as the, as the foul's gonna be called on Fox Chapel, but I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna call it on oh. Yofan, and it's gonna be on Wainer, it looks like. And that was just a melee of, of them all trying, oh, no, it looks like it's gonna go Fox Chapel's way. Very interesting. Because originally he pointed in the other direction. Yeah. So this official must have had a better view. Gonna bring it up the floor. Gonna kick it over. That one's gonna be tipped away. Yeah, Sheedway had the tip there. Drills it. Yo wow. Fan. Right over Sheedway. The Panty gonna bring it up the floor. They kick over to Wainer. Payne Wainer looking for something. Sheedway moving down low. Screen by Bailey. Bailey over. Over to Wainer, gonna go down low. And he's gonna bust inside. Sheedway gets fouled and, and one. one. To Baba Shibwe. With a chance at a three point play. And Shibwe called that play early on. And again, when you got Shibwe down there, there's no way that any of those guys can defend him. The free throw in and out. Oh. <laughs> but Bailey gonna get the steal. Floater, can't hit it. Shibway. Shibway, doesn't have it, they're on the ground. No jump ball called, they're going in transition. Wow. Wow, they hold, both teams held on the ball for I think like at least three seconds yeah. and they didn't call yeah. a jump ball. I was shocked that there was not a jump ball called on that one either. Driving in, DePanty. DePanty going in. That's, they're gonna say they that hit it hit the, the back, back of the back, uh, back of the backboard there. It's the panty is going to inbound it for the Vikes. So, so a lot of back and forth transition basketball here. I mean, it's it's definitely an exciting game. They're going to call a foul, and she, it's going to be on Fox Chapel. And I believe if that's going to make it their fifth foul, they're two away from the bonus. And that's going to be 22's fourth foul. Well, it's hard. It's it's really hard. To, uh, to guard a guy that is the size of Sheedway that also has the skill that he has. He has speed and power. Ooh, save that. Wilkerson, good save on the pass. Back down, down low to Sheedway. Ball's gonna be pun punched out. But well, he was double teamed on that one and he didn't see the tip coming around. They're gonna call a foul on Bailey. And that is going to put number 10 to the line. That is J.P. Dockey. And that's Jaden Bailey's fourth foul today. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. And that's a rough go for Bailey, a tough defender. Sheedway going to come out. Moses going to come in. Free throw. No good. Rebound to Panty. Bring up the floor, going to hit Settles. Settles driving, blocked away. Wow. So remember what I was saying about his leg? I don't think he's having a problem with it because he got major vertical on that in order to block that shot. In inbound it to DePanty. DePanty has 19 points today. Wilkerson. Going to kick over to Settles. Settles, floater, can't hit it. Rebound for Settles, though, but he's going to lose possession of it. They're going to be on the ground, but DePanty's going to come up with it. Yeah, good hustle there by DePanty to maintain possession. Just over five minutes left. DePanty, spin move. They're going to call a block, and he's going to go to the line for two free throws. So 
So Fox Chapel up right now by seven, 59 to 52. Five minutes, nine seconds left in the game. Free throw, no good. Second free throw makes it, and he's up to 20 points on the day. Cuts the lead. Cuts the lead for Fox Chapel down to six. Yes. Very important. Driving inside. Can't get it to go. Rebound Moses. Clean block. It's a panty. Going to bring it up the floor. Down low. Moses. Gonna he kicks it out that time because he was double teamed. Wilkerson. Wilkerson going to be taken away by Yofan and going the other way. Excellent He's steal by Yofan. And they're going to say that's a foul. Uh, yeah, I mean, when he was going up, there was a swat on the ball. I'm sure that he got part of his hand. So Yofan at the line, who has actually not been very good at the line. So Free throw, good. Increases the lead to seven again. Fox Chapel up 60 to 53. Second free throw, no good, rebound Wilkerson. Still seven point lead. Three pointer, Wilkerson, no good. So he had a great look at that three pointer, but it was just out of the back of the rim there. And great in transition again is Fox Chapel. That one's up and good. Mm. It's tough to give that up. Time out. Time out, Fox Chapel up 62 to 53, nine point lead over your Central Catholic Vikings. And we will be right back after these. Welcome to Helltown. Helltown Brewing is a craft brewery focused on making quality beer. They use specialty grains for all of their beers and aren't sparing when it comes to hops. Helltown is brewed locally in export in Mount Pleasant, or as it was once referred to during the Whiskey Rebellion of 1794 as Helltown, and was later dubbed the zip code of 15666. Check them out at any of their four Pennsylvania tap rooms located in Export, Houston, Mount Pleasant, and Pittsburgh Strip District. Helltownbrewing.com. Helltown Brewing reminds you to always drink responsibly. At Henny Jewelers, we know that sometimes you need jewelry that is extra special or unique. That's why we're proud to offer custom design services. Our highly skilled and experienced jewelers are some of the best in the industry. We'll create whatever your heart desires, working within your budget to design and produce a masterpiece just for you. From designing your dream engagement ring to updating family heirlooms, the possibilities are endless. Custom design at Henny Jewelers. Get started today. Henny Jewelers, your jewelers for life. Welcome back to Alumni Hall. My name is Kyle Templin. Right next to me is Ryan Meredith. And we are in for a great four minutes and 14 seconds left in this game. Fox Chapel up 62 to 53 over your Central Catholic Vikings. Vikings have the ball. And there were some good shenanigans back and forth there uh, by the crowd. The panty inside during the, during the timeout there, which was entertaining. Could have lose possession off his foot, Yofan. So Fox Chapel taking their time. Driving in, gonna kick out three pointer. No good, rebound though for Fox Chapel. That one's no good. Central Catholic back on offense now. Three pointer, no good. Rebound Jaden Bailey though. He's gonna go up, a lot of contact, no foul call. Out. Wainer thought about shooting a three, but he's going to give it to Langston Moses. He's going to get fouled. He's not going to make the basket, but he'll go to the line for two. Yeah, he had a disappointment on his face. He thought that that was in for sure. It just bounced out, but he is going to go to the line for two. He definitely earned that much. And DePanty trying the three there, hit the rim, unable to get it to drain. 
No good on the free throw. Mm. That's tough. So Fox Chapel still up by seven. Just over three minutes left in the game. That one's gonna be no good either. In and out. I'll be settled second. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. I mean, sometimes that happens. Wait, but, no, uh, they're going to call down on Jaden Bailey. Oh, Jaden Bailey. Wow. Oh, okay. And he's done. That's his fifth. Yeah, he's going to be done for the game then. Well, good game for Jaden Bailey. Played excellent defense. Unfortunately, he just got caught there on a couple of, uh, you know, bad luck calls there. Free throw, in and out, rebound, Wainer, but the ball's gonna be stripped away, and Wainer just got taken out, really ran over, but the ball's gonna be in the hands of Central. Central Catholic retains possession, <laughs> much to the disappointment and anger of the Fox Chapel crowd on that side. Wainer. Uh-oh, Wainer stuck. He's stuck, gonna have to give it there off and go. gives it to the panty. Over to Wainer. Wainer, jumper. No good. In and out. No. <laughs> They're going to get it across half court. Three pointer. And that's the guy you don't want no shooting way. threes. Number 12, Jake DeMont who has destroyed. Central He's gonna be fouled in and one. And that Are is a you four kidding point me? Play. DePanty has single-handedly put this team on his back. A tremendous game that he is playing. He has 25 with a chance for 26 and just as you thought they made it almost insurmountable lead, that brings you right back into it. And Good. he drains it. He has 26. He's done everything he can today. So lead now cut to six. Just over two minutes left in the game. Fox Chapel inbound in the ball, press on by Central Catholic. Gonna bring it up. Gonna drive inside. Wow. He's gonna be fouled. That was a hard foul, too. He's gonna be slow to get up. Yeah, will get not up. intentional, but two guys just coming together like that. That's that's gonna be hard all the time. And especially get when you got. And that will get them into the double bonus, too. Yeah. Yeah, and that is number 10 going to the line there. That is gonna be JP Dockey. As the free throws go. Lead back to seven for the Foxes. Just under two minutes left in the game. Gonna inbound it to Wainer and they're gonna bring it up the floor. Wainer driving. Awkward shot makes it anyways. Calls the bank. And it looks Six like they're going to call a timeout. So 67 to 61. Foxes right now leading your Central Catholic Vikings. We will be right back after these messages.
Welcome back to Alumni Hall. Welcome back to Central Catholic Vikings basketball. We're right now your Central Catholic Vikings are trailing the Fox Chapel Foxes 67 to 61. Minute 47 left in the game. Fox Chapel on the offense. Six point lead. It's still within reach of the Vikings, but they have to step it up here on defense. Gonna bring it up the floor for Fox. Yofan gonna have it. They're gonna find a man open. And that is number 12, and he has been dangerous at the three-point line. Gonna be. Gonna be an off-ball foul on Fox Chapel. Gonna change possession to the Vikes. So Vikings basketball, if they can nail the three here, they can make it a one-possession game. Yes. Over to Settles. Settles over to Moses. One more. Wainer thought about it. Kicks over to Wilkerson. Randy Wilkerson. And they are covering the panty like a glove. Down low, Moses gets it to go. And Moses goes down hard, and he's injured. He's, he's holding something in his He's leg. holding his knee. And he came down on that hard. And he's going to come off, but he is definitely going to be limping. And Sheedway looks to check into the game. That's a big loss, too. It is. He has been money down underneath the basket there, banging it out with everybody. And that is that's a tough loss for the Vikings with less than a minute left in the game. Minute seven. You're down, mm. you're down four. So still a two-possession game, but definitely a clutch basket there for Moses. We've got some cleanup here. Yeah, some wetness on the floor from when Langston Moses was down. Got to clean that up. Don't want to have anyone else getting hurt. So the coach talking to Sheedway over there while he, while he has time. Going to inbound it from the baseline after the bucket. Double team on Yofan, it's gonna be a turnover. They're gonna kick it out. Wayner thought about the three, but they're gonna slow it down. You still need to score in a hurry. It's a two possession game. Kick out, Wayner three pointer. Can't Not hit enough. it, rebound Fox Chapel. And Sheedway couldn't get inside to get the rebound. And that's gonna be a foul. Fox Chapel going to the line, and that is going to be number 22 for Fox Chapel. That three-pointer, that missed three-pointer might have sealed it for Fox Chapel. Yeah, unfortunately, he couldn't drain that one. And we've seen him drain clutch threes before. Just not his day today. The free throw is good. Going to make it a five-point lead. So five point lead now, 50 seconds left. You still have some time. Second free throw is good. Still a two possession game. Yep, six point lead. You need a three pointer over the settles. Looks like we're gonna call timeout, call timeout and we are gonna keep it here. So 45.9 seconds left. You're down by six. You got the ball. Who do you give the ball to? Well, they, they've they been cover, covering DePanty. You're covering DePanty. I still, since you won a three, I like Wilkerson. Wilkerson is just an absolute, I would, he's, I want to compare him to an NBA player, Clay Thompson. Like, he doesn't yep. need to make a lot of dribbles. He still makes three. So he's just a sharp shooter. If he can make, if you can get the ball to Wilkerson, it, more than likely it will go in. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, that's the problem right now, right, is that, you know, Fox Chapel, with their, they're covering the panty like a glove. I mean, that's a smart move. Unfortunately, Peyton Wainer hasn't been his night, you yeah. know. Norm, we've seen him drain big threes, but unfortunately, he just doesn't have the hot hand. I agree with you. I think that's who you go with. I think Wilkerson gets open, and you try to see if you can get, the, get some magic in his hand and hit the three and then put the full press on, you know, to get the ball back. I mean, I, it's still a lot of time for a two-possession two ball game. 
It's not impossible, but the odds are against them. I'll admit that, but there's still time. This Wainer's going to inbound it. They're looking for the panty. They're not yeah, going to handle it, but they're going to no, have to hand it off to They're covering Shuba. him very well. You still got to you got to score quickly here. The panty driving. They're going to get a two. He's absolutely mugged on that one, but they're not so, going to call a yeah, foul. No, he was mugged on that one. He was looking for the two and one, and frustration has set into DePanty because, I, and I don't blame him. I mean, he's worked so hard this game, and unfortunately, the calls just are not going his way. Now, good news is, is that we see Moses down here on the bench. He's standing up. You know, he's, he's rubbing out whatever it was, so hopefully it was just a pull or a cramp. So it's good to see him back standing up, walking around. So now the lead is seven. It's a three possession game, unfortunately. You got 33 seconds left. I mean, unless Reggie Miller's gonna check in. It might be over. Yeah. That's now the Pante. Fade Pulls away, up, fade Trills away, up. drains it. Cuts it to six. So number 12, gonna go to the line there, that's Jake DeMont. And he has been really, I mean, we talk about Yofan a lot, but Jake DeMont has really been the key to Fox Chapel's offense. Yes, like, he's played a terrific game today. He has. He's been dangerous at the three-point line. He knows how to get open, and he's been dangerous at the free throw line. Free throw, looks good. That might have sealed it right there. Yeah. Yeah, and number 12, like I said, DeMont, he is not a big man on the court, but he plays like one. Second free throw, good. The Panty. Three pointer. No good. And Yo Fox Fanny Chapel transition. going to rub it in with the dunk. And that's going to put the exclamation point on the game, Ryan. And it'll be over. Fox Chapel wins 75 to 65. I mean,. The Vikings grinded out what they could to try to keep it close. It was certainly a lot closer than the last game that they played Fox Chapel. I think it'll be interesting when they move into the playoffs if these two teams have to play each other again. Because I feel like, I feel like Central Catholic, the Vikings gained some ground. They figured out some things about Fox Chapel's offense, but it was kind of a little bit too late in the end. So, you know, I, I think that it's important that, uh, you know, they hold their head up high. It's a tough loss, but uh, there's a reason why Fox Chapel Foxes are number one in the 6A division. Yes, and as the Central fans going to high-five the players going into the locker room. Absolutely, and you know what? It's good to see that everyone on both sides, you know, good sportsmanship by both teams here in the end. You like to see that always. It got a little heated. You know, in a couple moments there, but, uh, you know, good good game. Good game all around by both teams. As the final score is going to be 75 to 65. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like, uh, do we see where Coach Urso is? He went into the locker room. Okay. So next up for, for the Central Catholic Vikings is tomorrow. Um, so they're right back at it. Yes. Here, need to, here at Alumni Hall. You can't swell on this too long. Just need to come out tomorrow and get the win. Yeah, and I think that that's important, Ryan. I, I think that, you know, this is, it's hard. When you, when you lose a game like this, like you, you really think that there's a couple of times where they got real close. It was like right within striking distance and Fox Chapel was just able to turn on the gas and just keep moving forward. And unfortunately, the Central Catholic Vikings could just not keep up. A lot of transition issues there for the Vikings when it came to the defense, 
Fox Chapel always had an answer for it, it seemed like. You know, um, and then, you know, unfortunately for the, for the Central Catholic Vikings, a lot of great shots, but just some of them just didn't fall like they normally do. DePanty fall. played one of his hardest games of his life. Honestly. He scored I mean, 28, was electrifying. Yeah, and, I mean, he just left it all out there. Yes. I mean, really just left it all out there. I mean, it, you can't say any anything against his game. I mean, he really took this team on his back. Every time they were down, he just went ahead and he got him right back into it. And just his drive alone was enough sometimes to ignite a fire in the Vikings, you know, to, to get that momentum swing that they had. But it, in the end, unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. Absolutely electrifying. Well, unfortunately, I don't think that we're going to get an interview from Coach Russo um, today. I mean, uh, you know, when we saw him come in, he was he looked like he had a pounder of uh, of energy drink there so he's probably had a long day i don't blame him i've had a long day so my name's kyle templin ryan meredith has, has been here with me calling the game thanks to joe emma jp tom for all the work that they've done behind the scenes to make ryan and i look good and sound good thanks again for joining us and we will be back with central catholic vikings basketball tomorrow so be sure to check the schedule